you, okay, so before I make a similar mistake, Mr. Sweeney, did you have the benefit of having that information ahead of the meeting? Did you say, did you see this information? You're, you're muted, by the way, Mr. Sweeney. It was sent the Google file with everything. Okay. I, yes. All right. All right, so motions are made and seconded on the roll call. Uh, Larry Hassan? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. Reggie Thomas? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. And Bob Pelagi is a yes. Okay. Uh, the next thing is lot releases. We'll take them in order. Uh, 41 Draper. So is that one been signed off by, as far as you know, Pam and uh, Rob signed off by DPW? Yes, this was a split of a lot. The front half of the lot is on Kingman Street. This is the back half of the lot. And the utilities, the only work in the street was utilities and that were, those were pulled off the street. And I have the inspection letter from DPW. All right. Um, let's do these separately because I think they're gonna have different results. So uh, some, let's see, do lot releases require, yes, they do, they require a vote. Yes. Uh, yes, they do. So Draper, Let's they are not a, public hearings, but they, they require a vote. Yes, no, you're right. Okay, so let's take Draper. Uh, motion, motion to accept a uh, motion to lot, release lot 41 Draper, please. I'll make a motion to release lot 41 Draper. I'll second that motion. Motion to made and seconded on the roll call. Larry Hassan. Yes. Tony Gonzalez. Yes. Reggie Thomas. Yes. James Sweeney. Yes. And Bob Pelagi is a yes. Okay, the second item is Woodland Park, Woodland Park um, lots 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, and 32, and 33. So there's eight. There's I'll eight make a lots. motion. I think. Make a motion to release lot Woodland Park slot 26, no, no, 27. No. We, um, thank you. We need some discussion. Yeah. On that. Do we have to read into the log? This this email we received well this is this is the this is the one uh, if i may uh larry this is the one that received this is the one if we just to quickly touch on the background here that the there is a neighborhood association that's been established up there and they've come to the planning board and to the mayor's office and to rob may's office on different issues there's been different uh, um i would just say uh situations of discontent there and they're represented by one spokesperson who did send that correspondence, there, there continues to be a lot of concern on the part of the neighbors on about the lack of performance and the lack of cooperation on the part of the developer. So um, this is, now I understand that, although I, I learned today that there's been money that's been posted for the, for the remaining work, but I still have concerns about releasing these lots because unless you have at least an adequate amount of money. I'm not suggesting that the developer might do this, but I mean, he could essentially walk away from this and with his with his released lots, and and then that you'd have no leverage. So, um, Mr. Chair, myself, myself personally, looking at the correspondence that was sent, um, we can certainly open this to a very quick discussion. I don't want to spend a lot of time with this. My suggestion to the board would be. That we that we take the that we take the correspondence that was that's been sent to the city, send it to the developer. If the developer doesn't yet have it, and, and continue this item uh, for a month and see what kind of response you get from the from the developer. That's my thought. Uh, I'd open it up to anybody else's thoughts. Tim was going to mention something. I must have missed that re receipt of that. If if you want to forward it to me, if it was in yeah. the Google files, I can't open those. So it was a separate email that went out to everybody. Yeah. To Tam, did you want to mention something? I, I did. Um, we have worked with this developer to secure this sum of money. Um, he has asked to change his method of surety, which is his right. Yeah. Uh, um, we've received several estimates for the work that's outstanding to the road and some other issues. And all those were verified by DPW. We added a 20% contingency to that amount to make sure that the city was 
protected. So in other words, in other words, the monetary amount that you're holding exceeds the, the, the cost of the work to be done. By 20%. Okay, well, that's, that's good to know from the city's perspective. I kind of, in a way, feel slightly a little bit bad for the neighborhood there. Once these lots are released, and in the grand scheme of development, when you have eight lots at the prices, price points that they're getting now, I'm not suggesting that the developer is going to do that. He hits that all of a sudden. How much, what's the what's the dollar amount, Cam, that you're holding? 30 to 30,000? 60,000. Oh, 60,000. All right. Well, that ups the ante. Yes. Okay. Well, I mean, I made a suggestion. I'm, it's just, I'm just one member, but I made a suggestion that we. Given the, given the number of times that that neighborhood has spoken out, contacted the mayor's office, I don't have to tell you, I mean, contacted Rob's office. Uh, I thought, give, give the, my suggestion of thought was, give the developer a one month cycle, a one month chance to respond to that letter where it's, the, the cover letter that was done by the spokesperson for the neighborhood, I thought did a pretty good job presenting that, but that's my thought. Uh, what, what do the others think about that? Uh, Mr. Chair, it's Larry. Um, I read the, I mean, I'm reading it now, but I read it anyways. And I took a drive up there myself a couple of days ago after I saw the, the email. And um, they, they, they do have a lot of, I think, legitimate complaints. Um, although the developing is going on up there. I think there's three houses that are going up right now. Um, you know, one of the things that stuck out to me there used to be that uh there was a gate there off of armistan going into the subdivision it's no longer there um they made mention of item number six here there's an installed some one of the neighbors installed a 96 foot long fence on the land that they do not own i can't verify whether they own that or they don't own it but i think that's part and parcel to the fact that there's really not a true home owners association going on up there either i think it's still Kind of being handled by the developer am i wrong in that it thinking? is yeah so it is still the developer is still in charge of a homeowners association and the we have been advised of the issue with the fence and um that's up to the property owner right that's more of a property ownership owner yeah I, that i understand so um i don't know i just i i think based on the number of uh, responses we had last time around on this and seeing this now, um, I'm kind of on board with, you know, continuing this at least one more month and see how the developer responds and see if they can satisfy some of the, the residents up there. That's my opinion. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I mean, it just lets the developer know that there are, you know, some level of checks and balances in place and it's not going to get rubber stamped. He's got to, you know, take in the uh, concerns of, of the neighbors and the abutters. So um, I like holding this off for another month as well. I agree. Uh, would someone like to make a motion to, first of all, alert the developer of the of the, of the neighborhood's concerns and postpone this or continue it for a month, please? Right. Motion to continue to alert developer on some of the issues needed. I don't know how else you want to, you know, title this, but motion to continue to next month. And, and alert the and, and alert the developer. Yeah. Right. I'll second that motion. Motions were made and seconded. Uh, let's see. Vote on the roll call. Uh, Larry Hassan. Yes. Tony Gonzalez. Yes. Reggie Thomas. Yes. James Sweeney. Yes. Bob Pelagi is a yes. Okay. Last yes. last lot release item is two thirty six West Chestnut Street. If you could fill us in on that one, Pam. Um, Risa, did you receive the check today? Yes, I did. He's all set. Okay, and it was for the amount we discussed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, these are two houses that unfortunately were issued building permits without the lots being released. Okay. And um, it was during the whole beginning of COVID. And so the houses are partially up and then the permits were stopped. But I, I'm pretty sure that during one of our planning board meetings and even in the tech meetings, we approved, right? We, they just didn't get- Correct. Right, 
so but they shouldn't have been issued a permit so um at at this point the do they have to go back and reapply with building department no no but, the permits but, are just on hold okay they need to post but you according to the what you just said they're posted surety right posted they have posted right? surety for the work that needs to, remains to be done needs okay. to grind and overlay the road okay and the, and the amount of money that you have secured is at least it is sufficient to do the work um that was what his estimate said and then again um we added 20 percent to that okay all right well I, right so how much was the check Ten thousand eight hundred. So 10,000, 8, 11,000, uh, 20%. So you added uh, another That was the 20%. percent he yeah. a small patch of road that unfortunately what he did, because he didn't read the plan, was um, to put two patches in the road instead of grinding and overlaying um, the length of the subdivision, the two houses. So that's the work that needs to be done. So it's, it's a small amount of work, but. Right. And they know they have to do it, right? Obviously. He understands yeah. that now, yes. Yeah. Okay. Correct. Because I mean, I drove by, you know, I when I saw the address, I was like, lot well, release. But I mean, the houses are up. Yeah. Correct. But he can't, his permits are on hold. Okay. I don't really have any other questions with it. I think, you know, I think we should, my opinion, I, I'm going to say yes to a lot release. Okay. Yeah, ha having no other issues there, I think I think the base has been covered. Um, so we're holding the, the appropriate amount of money for the lot release. So uh, would someone like to make a motion? Motion to approve lot release 236 West Chestnut Street. I'll second that motion. Motions are made and seconded. On the roll call vote, uh, Larry Hassan? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. Reggie Thomas? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. And Bob Pelagi is a yes. So first agenda item is- uh, um, Excuse me, Mr. Chair, could I just yes. go on record for a second, please? Yes, sir. Um, yes. Certainly, I agree with what we did with Woodland Parks, but I did not receive that email. I, Riza just forwarded it to me. Everyone was addressed except for me. So just to go on record, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We Mr. did Chairman. not send that email. Mr. May? Uh, yes, I have a comment from um, Councilor Nicastro regarding the Thatcher Street project. She thought that the board had agreed to move this to the front of the agenda. Um, does the board remember making that uh, arrangement? You know, I think you're right. I think we might have at the end of that meeting last week. Because I don't remember that, but I, I don't know. I'm not adverse to doing that. I don't remember that. I don't Did remember you recall? That. Yeah. I don't remember giving it a position. But... Yeah, because now it's number nine. Is there any issue with maybe going through that now or no? I don't. I don't. I don't have a particular problem with it. If you want to take it out of order, I assume by her comment that she doesn't want to wait till the end of the agenda, I guess. I mean, it was the last thing added to the agenda. That's why it's there. <clears throat> it's at the board's pleasure. Um, I don't, I don't, uh, are we ready to move on that one? Do we have everything we need to, to discuss that one? Yes, sir, we do. Okay. Well, let's move then. Let's move uh, nine to into the first position. Uh, again, I don't recall making any sort of concession, but that's okay. So uh, the next agenda item is site plan approval 40R 223 261 Thatcher Street. Uh, it's POUA Holdings. Um, this is the one that we had a second round of at our special meeting on this, and then uh, the board made comments that went back to. Uh, I guess it went for one final round with uh, uh, peer review with um, Beta, and then Beta Beta has responded, and, and that came in. That, that their response was addressed as late as today, so uh, that's where that stands. So um, are the are the 
is the um, applicant on or can you bring him on? Uh, yes, I'm moving them over now. Come uh, to panelists. Um, can you make me a co-host so I can help I, you. I it? have. You are. Okay. Bill, who else is on your team, please? Hi, hi Rob. Uh, we have, uh, I think, Brian Kucher, uh, Jay Szymanski, uh, Jim Burke. Um, I think Jeff Dirk was was going to be on. And then uh, from the planning office, uh, perhaps Dan Rabinovitz and TOUA office. So it looks, and I will also reach out to people as well. If you don't, if there's anyone you don't see, if you can let me know, Rob. Um, HW group, that's your engineer, isn't it? That's the engineer, yes. So will you be the, again, Mr. Grogan, good evening. Good evening. Will, will you be the spokesperson for this evening for this item? Uh, I think J Jim Burke would probably take the, the lead and then he'd uh, let me know when it's my turn to, uh, to chime in. All right, if good evening, are, Attorney Burke. If, if there are other attendees that were missing, please raise your hand um, so we can move you over. Uh, if there are other panelists or, or other people part of the present presentation team. I think we might have them all, but if, if you see yeah. other people need to be moved, please let me know. Yeah, I think we have everyone. Uh, so I think we can proceed, uh, Rob. Thank you, sir. All right, good, good evening, Attorney Burke. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I, I won't hold up the process. Uh, we, we are now here uh, at hopefully the uh, final portion of the hearing on the spot ER. And uh, we are prepared to, uh, 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 move to close the public hearing, but before uh, we, we did, we wanted to uh, work with Beta uh, to formulate a couple of conditions uh, that uh, certainly were within uh, their purview and our agreement and how we could move forward with a decision uh, with some uh, uh, functional uh, conditions for this complicated project. So uh, I'm going to let Bill take it from here. Uh, and then hopefully uh, when we've uh, reach that point, you can determine whether there are any other questions left open uh, for the board's consideration. If not, then I'm sure we'll assent to a closing the public hearing. Bill? Thank you, Jim. Yes, as, as Jim mentioned, uh, we worked with uh, Brian uh, Kucher uh, from Horsley Witten to respond to the, uh, the comments uh, from uh, from the beta group, I think we uh, in, in Brian can can provide probably a little bit more detail, but we addressed all of the comments with the uh, uh, and agreed to I believe five conditions uh, that would uh, apply to the project. Uh, you know, mostly relating to some additional uh, approvals that would occur during construction. Um, but uh, but I think that we're all in agreement on on those conditions uh, between our team and with the with the beta group. Uh, and believe that with that, everything has been closed out from the peer review side. Uh, Brian, is that correct? Uh, yes, that is my understanding, Bill. Great. Okay, great. So you, you, uh, Mr. Burke, uh, Attorney Burke, you alluded to some, some other conditions or things that you thought might still be yet unresolved. Did I understand that correctly? No, I actually, I think Brian, uh, uh, you either have formulated with a letter from Beta or from us. I think there are five conditions that uh, we think lead to the final questions that Beta had. And Brian, why don't you hop back on and identify the conditions for clarity for the board? Sure, Jim. Um, yeah, so that is correct. Uh, in our discussions and review with Beta, um, these are conditions that, that they had suggested and, and then we had uh, come up with a few more to address some of their, their comments. I'll just read them um, right now. Um, the first condition would be that the roof drains be shown on a final as-built plan once construction is done. Um, the second condition is the verification that adequate depth to groundwater is provided beneath uh, the bioretention area uh, number one prior to construction. The final, uh, the third condition is the final signed uh, completed stormwater pollution prevention plan or SWIP 
be provided to and approved by the city prior to the start of construction. The fourth condition is an additional PVC monitoring pipe be installed in the location of infiltration basin one to verify that adequate depth to groundwater is provided prior to construction. And the last and fifth condition is an agent of the city is to observe native soils after excavation for infiltration systems to verify design assumptions for soil texture and separation to groundwater elevations. All right. So it sounds like it sounds like Beta's concerns and the plan and the concerns that the planning board uh, gave rise to at the last meeting have been addressed. Uh, any other comments on the part of uh, the board members? Okay, so I think I think we're up to speed with those items. Um, Mr. May, you and I discussed briefly about um, you know the concept of the set aside, and uh, I think I think Attorney, I mean uh, Councilor Nicastro uh, outlined for us at the last meeting what that what those monies were for and so forth. I, I think I was under misunderstanding that that bulk of money was going to go to the betterment of the, of the project once it was built, but that's going to the city. So, uh, uh, Yes, it, if, if I could address that question, the money that uh, Councilor Nicastro was talking about, the $100,000, is money from the state for our participation in the Smart Growth Zoning Program. It is not money from the developer for mitigation. Okay. Um, the developer has uh, proposed to add to that pot um, in their communications, which has been shared with the board. They are uh, proposing to uh, sub, uh, provide an additional $5,000 uh, for potential offsite mitigation. And, um, and, and you remember from our conversation this morning or this afternoon, Mr. Chairman, um, we didn't think five thousand dollars bought a whole heck of a lot. No, uh, it but um, as you saw from the plans that have been submitted, uh, the applicant has addressed the play areas that um, uh, Tony uh, Gonzalez has Gonzalez has talked about, um, and um, the board has discussed and, and uh, thought needed in the project. So. Um, the money then that was going to be set aside for playground is is being used um, there by by their improvement. So um, the question is, how much should we have available for offsite mitigation should uh, the issue arise? Um, you and I talked potentially about a, a bond that um, uh, two years after the certificate of occupancy is issued, if that money is not needed, it would go back to the developer. Um, and, and that is um, uh, one of the options that, that you have as a board to discuss. And what, what, dollar, what dollar amount, what monetary amount did, did we have in mind? Uh, you and I talked about $30,000 as a bond. Um, but again, that's up to the board to discuss, but that money should be used before the state money that is yes. currently Thank set you. aside. And again, to be clear, if that money, that $30,000 set aside, uh, is, that for, is that for strictly limited to, 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 to site improvement? Is that what we're saying? I think it would be offsite improvement traffic mitigation. Oh, I see, okay. As opposed to other, uh, you know, park or open space or recreational activities. All right. Comments from the part of the board on this concept. I I like it. I'm in agreement. Uh, any comments on the part of the developer or through through their council? Any comments, Mr. Bur uh, Attorney Burke or Mr. Grogan? I certainly yield to Bill Grogan. Uh, in, in terms of the uh, the, the bond, uh, it uh, it doesn't have to be a cash bond. I assume it could be a, a fidelity bond. Uh, yeah. And uh, in terms of the uh, utilization, uh, I, I, it would be under the supervision of uh, probably someone like Mr. May to make sure mm -hmm. that we we have some. Uh, uh, 
commonality and understanding of what the use is and that it's uh, related to the project area rather than something that might be outside of the project area. I would include the uh, DPW commissioner in that also. But he always sounds good to us. Okay. But that's Mr. Grogan's call. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I think we're, we're certainly open to that. I think the, you know, we obviously want to make sure that, uh, you know, if there are mitigation measures that need to uh, occur, I think, as we outlined in the uh, the memo that was prepared by Vanas that we're prepared to undertake those. I think we obviously just want to make sure that there's an opportunity for us to, you know, to, to review and evaluate uh, yeah. those. And so that there's a, you know, there's an open process and dialogue to really determine what those uh, impacts are. And so that we can reach agreement that y yes, these are impacts and yes, these, you know, do necessitate uh, the use of some measures to be put in place. All right. Um, all right. It sounds like we are we have an agreement, I guess, in concept. Um, again, any other comments or concerns on the part of the board? Uh, I want to, would you help with the language, uh, assuming that someone's going to make a, a motion to go forward with the project, Mr. May? The portion of the, the portion of the motion that wants to that wants to acknowledge the thirty thousand dollar bond. I don't want to misspeak. Would you assist with the language for that portion of the motion? Um, I would say that that we we would move that we um, approve the plans uh, before us, um, incorporating the five conditions from the um, beta report and uh, that a bond of $30,000 be held by the city to make necessary offsite traffic improvements with um, in coordination with the developer. And should those funds not be used, the bond shall be returned. You know, would you, what time frame did you put on it, Mr. May? Two years, sorry. Yeah. Within oh, two years of the last certificate? Of the CFO, yeah. Well, that was a lot for any member to uh, the grass, but uh, would someone like to take a crack at that motion? So I'll make a motion to approve the plan, incorporating uh, the five. Uh, Tony, can I just add, ask you sure. also, when you approve this, it's the special conditions from beta and the standard city of Brockton conditions. Sorry. I got it, wait a minute. Okay, so I'll make a motion to approve the plan before us, incorporating the five conditions from beta, the standard conditions from the city of Brockton. Um, also, the bond of 30,000 held by the city to work with the traf offsite traffic improvements with the developer, if not used within two years, return to the developer. After the last certificate of occupancy is issued. The last certificate of occupancy is issued. I'll second that motion. Okay, motion's been made and seconded. Uh, motion, I mean, on the roll call vote. Um, and, I'm, I'm and, and just FYI, Mr. Sweeney cannot vote on this I, one. I was and just. You need all four of the other board members voting in the affirmative. Right, Mr. Sweeney is our new member, so he has not been a party to all of these negotiations. I understand that. So on the roll call, Larry Hassan. Yes. Tony Gonzalez. Yes. Reggie Thomas. Yes. Bob Palagi is a yes. So it looks like we have an agreement. It's been approved. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's been a long road, but uh, we appreciate all the work the 
uh, planning board has done along with the council and the Castro and Thompson. Yep, and thank you for your patience and your indulgence. We really, really appreciate professionalism. You're uh, to collectively quite a uh, quite a development developmental team that we don't see that often. So thank you to all of you, gentlemen. Have a good evening. Great, thank you very much. All right. So uh, again, back on schedule. The first the first item was then withdrawn 598. That was returned to CBA 598 North Main Street. Second agenda item was a commission return to CBA. That's 68 to 70 Field Street. Uh, that has been continued to. That was uh, Marie Lorquette. That's been continued to the fourth. The third agenda item is permission to the return to CBA 16 Albert Avenue. Uh, the denial was uh, uh, November the 10th, 2020. Uh, Nelson Montero. Um, good evening. Are those representatives on? Nelson, is your attorney there? Yes, she is. Um, can you identify her, please? I have a raise her hand or something. Uh, you can tell it. Our name is uh, Sylvia Catasinis. I mean, we're, we're, we're in different locations. Right, but we can see who's logged in and... Well, I mean, if you wanted to raise... Oh, I got her. her. Never mind, I see her. You found her? I just saw Wait her. a minute, where'd you just go? I just, I just brought yeah, her. Yeah, she's on. I see her on. There, she's been moved. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, would the two of you be able to on or, or turn your video on? Thank you. Mr. Chairman, we're set. Okay, thank you, Mr. May. All right, good evening, uh, petitioners, uh, council. Uh, if you want to give us, we're, we're in receipt of all of the documentation that was sent in. If you want to just give us a brief overview, that would I'd be appreciated. Just a just a brief overview, and then we have a, we have some comments. You're muted right now, me. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name again is Sylvia Katsinis, and I represent uh, Zubia LLC. The uh, owner of the uh, property 16 Albert Avenue. Um, last October, uh, Mr. Montero, the uh, manager of uh, the LLC, filed a petition oh, with the uh, uh, Brockton uh, Zoning Board of Appeals for a, a variance to convert 16 Albert Avenue from a single to a two family residence. Uh, that decision, uh, uh, there, there was a hearing on November 10th as the uh, board is aware at which time uh, the petition was denied. Zubia timely filed an appeal with the uh, uh, Plymouth Superior Court, which is presently pending. And uh, I do emphasize that um, we're reserving our rights under that appeal um, and still maintaining that uh, section 16 of chapter 48 does not apply here tonight. However, uh, in uh, we do, uh, if we do have a rehearing before the ZBA while the appeal is pending, uh, that might be give us an opportunity to resolve uh, the outstanding issues and uh, dismiss the appeal. So having said that, um, I proceed with uh, the merits. Um, could you, not to interrupt you, but could you tell me what the essence, just briefly, what the essence of chapter 1640A is, please? Uh, yeah, 16, section 16, that provides, that in essence puts somebody in the penalty box for two years uh, following an unfavorable decision by somebody like the, the ZBA, that they cannot uh, go back to the ZBA without first going through, in this case, the planning board. Yes. And getting, uh, I, 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 I think you... Uh, understand what, what that yeah, is. No, we're aware of that. I thought it. I thought it was tied to the to the superior courts. I thought section sixteen was tied to the superior courts appeal action. 
Well, in a way it is because uh, section 16 applies only to a final unfavorable, unfavorable decision. I see. And given the pending action, the, the uh, appeal, uh, that decision from the ZBA is technically not final. Um, however, uh, again, I say that uh, if we were to get back before the ZBA, I think we can um, uh, overcome some of the hurdles uh, that were there to begin with. Okay, thank you for that explanation. Um, so um, the ZBA question, in this decision, the uh, ZBA questioned the number of bedrooms in the uh, proposed conversion. Uh, the original plans showed a total of 11 bedrooms. And uh, in response to that concern, uh, Mr. Montero has uh, revised the plans, reducing the number of bedrooms from 11 to eight for the two units now. We're talking about two units. So that would be four bedrooms per apartment, which is certainly not uh, unreasonable or excessive. Also, the ZBA raised an issue regarding the height of the structure once it has been um, uh, amended. And uh, on the original plans, it showed the height as being as 37 feet. The uh, zoning limits the height to 35 feet. So in the revised plans that are before the board, uh, we have lowered the height to 35 feet so that it does comply with the zoning. Also, um, although the, the board did not specifically address this in its decision, uh, there were two large rooms uh, that were going to be put in the attic. In other words, part of the attic was going to be finished. And uh, those rooms are labeled as bonus rooms on, on the plans before you. Uh, one of the rooms was 17 feet by 24 feet and the other was 15 feet by 24 feet. So, so we're talking about approximately 770 square feet. Um, Zubia has eliminated those rooms. So, so the attic will not be finished. So uh, the applicant has made substantial changes to the plans that were uh, denied by the, uh, the ZBA. Um, also, the uh, ZBA found that there was um, uh, that the petitioner had not shown hardship. And, uh, and although the, they made that finding, there is in fact hardship and that hardship arises from out of the uh, uh, circumstances relating to the structure of the house. The uh, original portion of the house was built around 1920 and it's a, um, uh, classic colonial design. It's two stories with a basement and an attic as a pit roof. And subsequently, uh, years ago, uh, one of the prior owners added an addition to the back of the house. That addition is a single story unit with a flat roof and it's built on a slab. There is no basement under there. Still later, somebody else added a second edition. They put that on the back of the, the first edition. That edition is one and a half stories high. And again, it sits on a slab. There's no basement beneath it. And to make matters worse, and I'll get to it in a minute, the two slabs are in different levels. There's three to four feet difference between the two of them. So, um, and, and I'll get to it in a minute, how that, that difference in, in, in the uh, levels causes a real problem. The original portion of the house is heated by gas and, um, uh, and that gas heat extends to a portion of the first edition, but not the entire first edition. And the reason is that they cannot extend the gas lines underneath the slabs to heat the, the, the remainder of the first edition and the entire second edition. Council, so I, I don't mean to, unfortunately we missed, I don't know, speaking for myself, we, I missed a good portion of your presentation, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't know if anybody else did. Um, I, I, hate to, I, I lost, I dropped out when you, would, when you were explaining how he had modified the, uh, the plans from the 11 to the eight bedroom. I, I, did anybody else miss any of that? 
Well, I no. Be willing. No. No, I think you're the only one, Bob. Then proceed. I'm familiar enough with it, so. All right. Okay. So now the the original portion of the house is heated with gas, and um, uh, however, the rest of the house that's that's built on the slab is heated by electric uh, electricity, and needless to say, electricity is pretty uh, costly and not all that efficient. So the occupants are constantly complaining that the house is too cold in the winter and too hot in the summer. It's also, there's also air conditioning there. So, so what Mr. Montero would like to do is uh, replace that old uh, heating system and the old conditioner with uh, gas. And in order to do that, he would have to uh, put a second story over the first story addition and, and, and then an attic over that. So doing that, it, that way he can run the pipes from the basement, run the, the, the um, gas line from the basement up to the uh, uh, attic, run it across the attic and down to the slab portions of the house. Um, and also what he would do is put new air conditioning, uh, the air conditioning apparatus in the attic. However, adding a, a second story and uh, the attic is going to cost between $150,000 to $200,000. And that just is economically unfeasible for a single family home. So that is a, a, a literal enforcement of the zoning laws would cause him a financial hardship. And that's why we request the variant. Okay. Are you? All right. Thank you. Um, all right. I have um, a couple of concerns. Um, as we know, generally the hardships, chapter 40A, section six, I think it is, it has to do with land shape, soils, and topography, and, and a literal, a literal enforcement. I mean, he's able to use the property. It's not like he's not able to use the property. He's able to use the property. All, all of the things that you've mentioned are certainly challenges to the property, but those are those are hardships that I'm not sure that, well, I don't want to speak for the zoning board, but those are not hardships that the, that the, that the zoning board would generally take into consideration when considering such a large um, development on, 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 in, a, in an R1C single family zone. Um, you, 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 one, of the, one of the things that the, I'm re, I read the zoning board's decision and one of the things that they, that they highlighted was that the grant of a variance would derogate from the intent of the zoning as it applies to that neighborhood. Um, so I began to get curious, how many homes, if any, in that neighborhood are of a multifamily nature? You're asking, for relief from the Zoning Board of Appeals to make this into a rather large, not a two-family, but a rather large, when you have a total of eight bedrooms, a rather large two-family home in what is a single-family zone. And I can't tell, I'll, I'll be quite frank with you, I, I don't think that your plot plan helps your cause at all, because it doesn't, it doesn't tell me anything about what's going on in the grand neighborhood. I don't know how close the house on the left hand side is. I, I don't know. There's nothing that your plot plan tells me about what's going on in the grand neighborhood. Not when you want, not when your proposal is asking to change a single family uh, lot into a, into, a, into a two family. I mean, your, your hardships notwithstanding. The other concerns I've got is that when you put this proposed addition, you also need relief from minimum side yard. You're in a single family zone, I1C you need minimum 15 foot on side yard. You haven't mentioned that. You would be violating zoning in two places, the side yard, the dimensional zoning. The other concern I've got is the city records show in your brief states that the, that the, house, that the lot that the house is on is some 6,700 feet. So that would suggest to me that does, does the applicant actually own, does he have title to the two properties? He does. Okay, are they in the same name of ownership? Uh, I believe they are, but in any event, he, he does have control over both properties. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't, what did we look at there, Mr. May? Did we look at the fact that he doesn't, it does, they're not in the, either not in the same name or they're, I mean, it's an inconsistency that if I was 
sitting on the Board of Appeals um, on this case? Those are the concerns that I would have. The concern that we discussed this afternoon is that they are two uh, existing lots of record and uh, the, the vacant lot could be sold off and, and developed, yep. leaving um, very little space for the other two families. And you had recommended that they be combined. Yes, I think, well, they need to be combined because you're going to need, because if you don't, if you don't combine them to start with, you're going to exceed, you're going to need a lot of relief from this thing. You're going to, if you don't combine those lots and that, and that, and that addition lives on this tiny lot, the other thing you're going to need relief from is maximum lot coverage. You're, you're going to grossly exceed maximum lot coverage. So you need, you need to combine the two lots. And, and in my opinion, you need to show in a general sort of a way what's going on in the neighborhood so that we as a planning board and the members of the Zoning Board of Appeals can get a little bit more comfortable with the fact that your proposal, if it's granted, doesn't derogate from the intent of the zoning as it was, as it applies to that neighborhood. I would like to- Those call are my concerns, but let me open up to the, the other members of the planning board. Do you have any other concerns, board members? Um, can we ask the applicant? Um, I, I'm pretty sure he, is, from what I'm seeing, as far as the assessors is concerned, is that both lots are under the same ownership. Don't know if that helped you, Bob, but I, I believe that owns both lots. I, I don't think there would be any intent to try to sell that off. It's just noted as an accessory land piece of land. I don't think you can do anything else with it, but Maybe the applicant can speak to that or his attorney. Nelson, do you want to take that? Uh, I'd like to answer a question that you raised earlier, Mr. Palagi, about uh, the neighborhood, about uh, are there are other multifamilies in, in the area. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the area, if you've been there. No, I haven't. And, and, I, and I, I'm supposed to, if I'm looking this, Either, either as a member of the zoning board or a member of the planning board, I'm, su I'm supposed to, be, when you're do, proposing something like changing a use in the district, I mean, it's helpful to give the voting member sort of an idea or the flavor of what's going on in the neighborhood and, and your, your plot plan or site plan falls woefully short of doing that. Well, um, just to fill in a little bit, the house directly across the street is a two-family house. How do I know that? Uh, you can look it up in city records. I, don't, I shouldn't have to look it up, Mr. Montero. I got enough stuff to do. That's, well, I, you, that's, that's your obligation. You're the one that, you're the petitioner. You're the one that's presenting the project. I don't need a home, I don't need a homework assignment. Well, let me, let me tell you a little bit more about, I mean, if you look at Court Street and Center Street, all around the places, you got multifamily homes. Okay, fair enough, but I don't know that. And, well, I, I'm surprised that you don't know that. And, I'm not and, supposed to know that. I'm, I'm surprised. To. I am surprised that you're in the city planning office, and you do not know that information. Excuse, excuse me. Can I? Can we get a little respect here? Calm down, please. Be respectful, Mr. Montero. Thank well, you. Well, I mean, listen. I, I mean, I'm not raising my voice, am I? No, no. But you're uh, you're uh, you're being you're being a um condescending and we need to well, avoid he's that been, so, he, well, well, well he's been condescending too he's telling me that i should be doing that homework you should be doing your homework all right, all right. well if, okay. if i may interject I, I i do call to the board's attention that there were several letters of approval for this project from the neighbors that that goes to show that this is not going to uh derogate from, from the neighborhood but it's going to be it's going to enhance the neighborhood What's on there now, quite frankly, is a monstrosity. And, and what Mr. Matero is trying to do is make it into a much more attractive uh, building. And the neighbors see that, they, 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 they can appreciate that. Um, it's also gonna provide you know, uh, uh, much needed housing to, to a family. So, so th there are um, a lot of um, uh, advantages for, for what we're asking here. Well, um, I would like to see myself. I would like to see a plan that that uh, represents what what is going on in the neighborhood. Uh, that's not unusual. I mean, 
that, that's what I'm what I'm suggesting to you is not unusual. Mr. Palazzi, I'd just like to add one, one more thing, if you don't mind. Yes, sir. Um, so that you know, uh, the building that we're proposing, we're not ch changing the footprint of the building at all. You, you said something about uh, whatever's to the side, the 15 feet. We're not changing the footprint of the building at all. We're just going up on it. That's right, but you're making, you can't do that. You're, as your attorney can probably tell you, the original building footprint is 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 grandfathered, but when you when you put something today, you, you can't make a, you can't make a non-conforming uh, situation more non-conforming, and that's what you're doing by putting a second addition. You can't do that. You would need you need relief from side yard setback, which you didn't ask for, and if you don't combine the two lots, you need relief from lot coverage. Although I don't I don't know that you own the two lots, so. You're telling me that you do, so I I think your I think your proposal. I'm not going to say your proposal is a bad one. I think that your I think that your documents are weak. That's all. I think your documents are lacking. Well, I, I'm sorry, but I, I gave you guys everything you asked me for the hearing. If if you had asked me for more things, I would have been more than happy to provide anything else you needed. But what you asked. I provided, and I'm not sure about this um, conforming, but I don't see why I need more relief if I'm going over the, on the um, existing footprint. Okay, well, I, I don't want to spend too much more time with that. The minimum side yard in an R1C is 15 feet. And you're proposing a second story at seven and a half feet. I'm sorry? You're proposing a second story at, at seven and a half foot offset and you're making a more you're making a non-conforming use more non-conforming i'm sorry but i'm not following you if i if i'm going on top of the what's existing there already how is that changing anything i'm going up not to the not sideways but that's right but you can't but you can't enter into that space uh unless you get relief from side yard your, your attorney i think can explain that to you uh at another time do, do any of the board members have any comments What I would like to see, what I would like to see is I'd like to see the two lots combine into a plan. Uh, and I would like to see, uh, I would like to see the area, just the general area. I'm, I'm not talking about doing a whole neighborhood survey. I would like to see just the immediate, maybe one or two properties, just, just some sort of an explanation, one or two properties uh, on either side and maybe to the rear, uh, what, the, what the general use is. If this whole area is R1C, that's what I would like to see. But so so would you like some pictures, a video? What would that do? What, what would you mean? Well, I mean, I would like to see a more comprehensive site plan, a more comprehensive plan that that helps this board and that will help the and that will help the zoning board of appeals uh, make a decision because I'm sure you have a copy of the zoning board's decision and they listed a number of concerns that they had, one of which was uh, that the that the dwelling, if it was approved would derogate from the intent of the zoning bylaws in an R1C zone. So you did take care of the height. I appreciate that. And then you did, I don't, I can't speak to the zoning board. You had, you were looking for 11 bedrooms and you reduced that to eight. Uh, I don't know. I can't speak to the zoning board, but um, I would like to see, uh, uh, they also said that you didn't have, uh, that you didn't demonstrate a hardship, a hardship that's, that's uh, described in chapter 48. I think it's six, maybe six or 10. I think it's chapter six. But uh, you, and, you, and uh, the hardships that I heard tonight, with all due respect, they're not hardships that you would base a, a variance on. But in if, any I case, may, if I may be heard on that point, uh, a hardship also pertains to the structure. It's not limited to, to the soil, to the land. It, the the, the uh, uh, chapter very, the uh, section very, uh, specifically relates to circumstances relating to the soil condition, shape, or topo topography of such land or structures. So it can very those the hardship can very well arise from the structure itself, not from the land. Okay. Um, that is a new one on me. 
Yeah, I didn't see that. I didn't, that's, I've never heard that one. Uh, never... I, I think most of the cases that come up do involve the land, but, but that, but the word structure is, is very prominent in this, uh, in this section. Well, that, that would remain to be, what I would like to see is, I'd still like to see a general, a general concept of what's going on in the, in the neighborhood. Certainly, certainly, I don't know if the house to the immediately left of this is, because it's an old building and it's a grandfather building, I don't know if it's right up against that property line, I have no idea. So I think we've worked this enough. I'm, I'd like to ask someone to, uh, if there's no other uh, discussion on the part of the board, uh, I would like to see a more expansive site plan. I think it would be beneficial to us. I think it would be beneficial to the zoning board to, to make a decision. I think myself personally, I think there was a, a few issues that they did address, but I don't, I think that there was a, a, a few of the issues here that have yet to be addressed. But for myself, I'd like to see uh, a little bit more explanation in the part of a, a, a uh, an engineer or a surveyor site plan as to lo the location of the buildings in the immediate area. Yeah. In, in how they're being used. I, I would agree with that. And um, to combine those two lots. I think that's key. That's, uh, it may be in the same ownership with those two. And how would you do that? You'd, you'd, you'd draw a form A plan or you're actually, I guess you could do it with, I think you could do it with an 81X. Oh no, no you can't. You, I don't know that you, maybe you can't because you've got the internal lot line there. Um, yeah, you'd have to do a form A, I think. And those are not those are not um, excessive requests by any means. So you need to, you would need to combine those two lots under using utilizing a plan, a recorded plan, to make them into one lot, record that, and then and then show just to, just to be a little bit more expansive about what's going on in the general neighborhood. So do we propose? You would, con you would continue this. I think you could continue it, yeah. I think that's reasonable. If the board was to uh, undertake Mr. Palaji's recommendation. Any public comments on this? Return, is a return to ZBA? Yeah. Uh, that's right too. Is there any, uh, do we have anybody that wants to be heard, Rob? Hang on, Mr. Chairman. Um, if anybody would like to address the board on this issue, please uh, signify by using the uh, raise hand emoji at the bottom of your screen. If you hover over the bottom of the screen, you'll see the uh, uh, menu bar pop up. And I am not seeing anyone raising their hands, Mr. Pelosi. All right, thank you. Uh, all right, well, hearing none, if someone wants to make a motion, I, I shared my comments. If anybody else has any other comments or would like to make a motion, uh, so be it. So I'll make a motion to con continue this, to see a more comprehensive site plan of the area and for the petitioner to consider combining those two lots. You would need to combine those on a Form A plan and record the plan. Yes. Okay, motion's been made and seconded. No, seconded. Somebody has to second it. Second. Pardon me? Second. Now it's seconded. Okay. All right, thank you. Motion's been made and seconded. Uh, vote on the roll call. Larry Hassan? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. Reggie Thomas? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Bob Pelagi is a yes. Thank you. Thank you very much for your attendance. Thank you. All right, next agenda item is uh, um, it's the amendment to 586 Montello. All right, thank you. Find is it just Scott or is there anybody else joining Scott? I believe it is just me, Mr. May. Oh, poor you. That's all right. Good evening, Mr. Faria. Good evening, Mr. Bellagi. Uh, good evening, board members. Scott Faria from Holmgren Engineering. 
representing Gen 3 Realty LLC uh, property at 568 Montello Street, the Nicoli Oil uh, property. We had a site plan before you folks last March that was approved. And uh, the site plan had a 60 by 120 foot warehouse building and a 60 by 60 office building. Uh, during construction, the Nicolis decided that the 60 by 60 office building was bigger than they really needed and they decided to go with the 30 by 60 office building. Uh, in doing that, we were also able to eliminate one of the three entrances curb cuts that we had out onto Montello Street. So we eliminated what was proposed to be the middle curb cut uh, and just went straight across the parking lot, added some green space as opposed to the, the 24 foot uh, opening. The issue that we have is there's no method uh, in the planning board regulations for an amended plan uh, or, or any kind of a administrative approval, even though it's, such, it's a minor change and actually a reduction in scope. We still had to file for this amendment uh, to you folks to have you approve the, the change in plan. So uh, again, it, it's two small changes, both of which kind of decrease the, uh, the footprint and the impervious uh, footprint on the property. All right. Um, thank you, Mr. Barrett. Any any comments on the part of the board? Any comments on the part of the planning department? I think it's no, just a very, minor, very minor change. Uh, public hearing. So, is there any anybody uh, want want to be heard there, Mr. May? Uh, if anybody would like to speak on this item, please raise your hand so you can be recognized. And I have not had anyone raise their hand. Wonderful. All right, we'll close that portion of the hearing. All right, if there's no uh, no other comments or concerns, I don't have any concerns or uh, issues with this. So if someone would like to make a motion to approve the amendment to the site plan. I'll make a motion to approve the amendment to the site plan. At 568 Montello, second, please. Second. There's been a motion made and seconded. Uh, vote on the roll call. Larry Hassan? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. Reggie Thomas? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. And Bob Pelagi is a yes. Thank you, Mr. Ferrier. Thanks, folks. See you soon. Thank you. All right. Next agenda item, site plan approval, 944 uh, Warren Avenue, with residential units at ET Engineering. <laughs> Azu, is anybody else with you? Is your client there? Uh, yes, yes, I am here with uh, my client, uh, Steve Tari. Oh, and, he's with you, okay. Yes, uh, uh, that's why we're both wearing masks. <laughs> I can only see you. Really? <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, there he is. Steve. Yeah, Hi, Steve. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I'm not sure if uh, Tony uh, McCloskey will be able to join. Uh, he was not feeling very well. And so he oh. had, um, I don't see he, him on, so. Um, so basically, um, good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Uh, thank you for allowing us to speak with you this evening. Uh, basically, this is a side plan for construction of a, a building, a three unit. Uh, building on an existing land. And uh, we went through a tech review uh, last month and um, and uh, we uh, received certain comments uh, through the tech review process and we addressed those and we submitted a correspondence uh, that addressed the comments that we received and uh, we've, uh, we have uh, on-site water. We're actually proposing a hydrant, uh, as well as uh, one-way circulation, one-way entrance, and one-way exit. Uh, through the uh, project, we have uh, adequate drainage, and we have, and we have uh, adequate on-site parking. And so we are looking that, uh, uh, to uh, receive your blessing so that uh, 
uh, we can go to work before contractors get too busy. And um, that is the extent of uh, uh, my discussion, Mr. Chairman. If you uh, thank you, Bob, uh, Rob, for uh, sharing. Uh, uh, you're a good man. Makes our life a lot easier. So as you, as you can see, the blue fruit, uh, the blue um, highlight shows the proposed um, uh, three-unit building. And then in, in a little bit dark gray color is the parking area along with the drainage. And um, on the southerly on the southerly side of that, Rob, if you can go, yeah. On the south southerly end of the project uh, will be exit, uh, exit only. And then where you have that little peninsula halfway in the middle of the property uh, next to the abutton line where we have the store have, uh, on the left, right there, will be the entrance only. Um, one of the comments that we received was, we had proposed the uh, dumpster right about halfway on the easterly line of the property, uh, right where uh, it says, next to where we have the uh, zoning data. Um, and uh, the Board of Health and the uh, Fire Department made some comments to that effect. And so we have relocated that to the southeast corner of the property. And, um, and uh, we think uh, well, we have a clean decent project and uh, would like uh, your um, acquiescence in approving and uh, accepting the site plan. I, uh, thank you, Azu. I had one question for you. Uh, so, Rob, could you drop the screen down a little bit so I can see the top more than all? Okay. Uh, during the construction, Azu, where are you? Where are you? Your construction support vehicles. Where are they coming in and out of? So they're gonna come in, Mr. Chairman, on the. Uh, uh, you see where there's a little dimple on the property, where it's yeah. all like a U-shape to your yeah, right there. Yes. That's gonna be our entrance. Okay, that's fair enough. The only thing, the only thing that I saw when I reviewed this, Azu, is that is that especially on Warren Avenue, you need a stabilized construction exit, and you you desperately need one there, and I don't see one. Um, I think it maybe it's just an oversight, but you should have one that in a detail on the plan. Do, do you have it on there? But I don't see it. I'm sorry. Uh, 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 can I may may may, uh, may I ask you to repeat what you just said, Mr. Chairman? Yes, a, a stabilized construction exit during construction. You you desperately need that. So so the area that we have, are uh, the entrance and the exit from the property. Those are all paved, Mr. Chairman. Those are stable stable surfaces. We're not talking. There's not going to be any excavation at the entrance or the exit. Oh, I see. So yeah. if the does is that length, I, I can only ask you then. So obviously the area where the proposed building is going is going to be disturbed area, but when the trucks or the vehicles get onto that that stretch of paved uh, surface as you're as you're as you're referring, is that enough to clean the clean the vehicle, the uh, the, the, the uh, tires of the vehicles, as you? Yes, sir, because you're talking of uh, an, a, length, a distance of more than 100 feet uh, traveling southerly and then turning uh, westerly, to uh, uh, westerly to exit. So uh, that's, over, that's over at least 200 feet. Okay, because if there's any tracking, I'm sure you'll know that, you know, if there's any significant tracking, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that'll get the attention of DPW, but that was well, the only... I don't expect that, Mr. Chairman, for the simple reason, if you look at my, uh, if you look at the test pit data, uh, the material there is very gran very granular. Okay. So unlike our, uh, if, you, if we had a lot of silt, loamy material. Yes, it would track, it would track uh, more, yes. Exactly, but the, the material that I uh, uh, observed is very granular and coarse. So you, you're not gonna get that uh, type of, uh, uh, tracking, but uh, Mr. Terry has done an incredible job in the in the uh, city of champions, and I think uh, 
he would have, uh, he, he, he builds very clean projects. And, right. uh, and if, that, if that were to be a concern during construction, he would uh, move very quickly to address that. I can right. I, well, I I tell you of that. Thank you for that explanation. Uh, do any of the board members have any concerns or questions? I don't have any questions, it looks pretty good to me. All right, uh, Rob, Ms. do you have Ms. anybody that wants to speak? Uh, excuse me, um, Mr. Chair, Azu, yes. I see yes. something about um, planning and economic development, wanting you to keep the existing entrance and exits so that you don't confuse the neighbors. Did you agree to that or change that or what? Okay, is okay. If that's, what, if that's what they want. If that's what they want, but here is the, uh, in terms of traffic operations, we have a store, it makes more sense. Uh, Rob, if you wouldn't mind uh, bringing that plan. Okay. Uh, okay. So if you look at, uh, if you look at our, uh, right, the abutting land, there is uh, a store right there. That's a building right there. So if you try to exit from in that direction, that blocks your uh, line of sight. You almost have to go all the way into the street to uh, see oncoming vehicles. So it makes much more better sense to have that as entry only purely for safety consideration. So that the, the southerly driveway that we want to use for exit, uh, for um, exit provides a better line of sight. Uh, but if, if the preference is to switch them around, we will do that, but I think uh, safety, safety auto uh, prevail in this instant. And, yeah, and that, that, the, that makes sense. I was going to say the department can live with that, uh, provided that you know you you add some more um, signage yes, um, inside so that the neighbors don't get lost in the middle of the night. Yes, sir. And we are we are proposing we are proposing a couple of signs. Right where, right near the dumpster, you can see a, a sign that we have there, and then, and then there were at the transition between the new construction and the existing. We also have signage there as well. Okay, and we propose to uh, put a paint. Uh, uh, there's a uh, um, our uh, plastic of uh, line and paints on the ground as well to provide an additional, additional, additional visual effect. Thank you. Uh, any other comments or concerns on the part of the board? I don't think we had anybody in the public arena, correct, Mr. May? Is there anybody in the public who would like to speak on this project? If so, please uh, indicate by raising your hand uh, using the raise hand icon at the bottom of your screen. And I do not see anyone raising their hand, sir. All right, thank you for that. Um, well. I think uh, if there are no other, no other questions, comments, or concerns, I would entertain a motion. Motion to approve site plan approval, 944 Warren Avenue. I'll second that I'll motion. Uh, with the condition of adding the signage for the entrance and exit, as Mr. May said. With the condition of adding the signage. Thank you for that. As noted. Thank you, Tony. Okay. Uh, Vote on the roll call. We have a motion made and seconded to approve, subject to the signage. Vote on the roll call. Larry Hassan? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. Reggie Thomas? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. And Bob Pelagio say yes. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Have a good night. All right. Uh, next is number six is site plan approval, 30 Inneville Street. It's a mixed use, Jacob Driscoll Engineering. Oops. Wrong engineer. Oh, there he is. Throw Scott out of there. Yeah, I moved Greg. I don't know if his client is there, though. Greg, is your client there? I'm not sure if he's on or not. It'll be Harrison Bonner. Yeah, I don't see him. So, okay. 
me out. Was he coming on with you, Mr. Driscoll, or could you feel comfortable proceeding? Uh, I can proceed. Um, please, please do. Please, well. If you're on Harrison, go ahead, raise your hands. Let them know you're here. Yeah. I don't see him anywhere. There's only one person that's not identified, and that's a telephone number. So. Is it a 252 number? No. All right, so Greg Driscoll, uh, Jacob Driscoll Engineering here tonight, uh, representing 30 into Bill Brockton Mass LLC, uh, which is Harrison Bonner and Alex uh, Bukala for um, the proposed project that they are doing over at Antibale Street. So this project, they received uh, a variance in 2019 uh, for a use variance um to put residential in the c1 zone um and then well this was the previous applicant and then since then um we went to tech review we were on our way to, to you guys about a year ago uh and then the previous applicant decided to go back to zoning again uh to get a variance for adding more units that required a variance from parking and uh in height for like nine inches um so those were both granted. Uh, we went back to tech review this past uh, November and we have been through Godcom, um, closed that meeting out a few weeks ago. They issued a order of conditions and now we're before you find folks. So um, what the applicant is looking to do is this uh, existing vacant building at 30 Intervale Street, which was previously uh, a bar or tavern um, it's been vacant for some time. Um, they would like to build an addition off of the back of the building and add a floor to it. So it would be three stories and um, convert it to residential use. So it would be five apartments on each floor. Um, total of 15 apartments in the building. Um, and yeah, it's shown right there. Um, currently, the existing property is most pretty much all paved. Uh, I think Rob's looking to bring up the site plan. Yeah, I am. Um, so located at 30 Antibill Street, just north of the intersection of Ames Street. Uh, the Shoe City Tavern is located directly south of this building. Um, and we are in the neighborhood commercial C1 zone. The site is about 22,000 square feet. And as I mentioned, contains an existing building that is currently unoccupied. And as you can see, if you go up to that last plan, the existing conditions plan, you can see that it's all paved. All that gray is, is pavement. Um, and on the next sheet, you'll see the proposed plan, proposed layout plan, um, and all that pavement goes away. The, the gray shaded area is the new parking lot. All the other areas, um, which you see later on on the um, landscape plan, uh, will be all grass and, and landscaped and everything. Uh, we have a new fence around the area where Rob's got pointer right now. Uh, the, the property line goes right up to the abutting building. so. They are going to put a fence along there, have the lawn area, and off the parking lot, those are going to be patios and um, balconies. The new parking lot will be have handicap accessible spaces. Um, we have, uh, let's see. Could you zoom in on the, um, the zoning table real quick? On the zoning table? Yeah. Right so, uh, as I mentioned, uh, 30 spaces are required, but we got a variance down to 20 spaces. Uh, there are also five spaces located out on the street, which, while not owned by the building, uh, available for visitors and 
and residents of the uh, of the building since on street parking is allowed in the area. Um, site lighting will be in the form of uh, wall packs mounted to the building. We did provide a lighting plan and from from the architect. Uh, so currently the site, as I mentioned, is all paved. Uh, there is no real, there's no, oh, actually I'll speak to this right now. This is the landscape plan. So this is all the green space that we're adding to the, to the project. Uh, so we'll reduce runoff by quite a bit uh, just by adding all that green space. And off the back of the parking lot there where the little back out area is, that is a, a stone diaphragm. And then uh, if you look at the grading plan, you'll, you'll see that there is a vegetated filter strip and a swale. And off the back of the building, there is a infiltration trench um, to maximize the amount of infiltration coming off the, the roof. And- Is that on the sheet? Uh, that would be on sheet, I think three or four. The grading sheet. Three or four. That's layout. Next one will be grading. There we are. So we have a stone diaphragm, a five foot wide sod strip, and a vegetative filter strip. And, to, and you see those arrows along there. That's the swale. Uh, to the north of the property, we have a BBW, and we got the trout brook, which enters into a box culvert right after the uh, our property line starts right there. So that's why we had to go to conservation. Um, it's been there a buffer. And uh, Beta reviewed it, this project for, for conservation and we addressed all their comments and concerns regarding the, the drainage and, and anything else. Um, let's see, Going, uh, coming out of tech review, we had a few comments, um, included this letter with the uh, response to comments letter with the submittal. I can go through those real quick. Um, Mr. Riley from DBW asked to research the size of the existing domestic water line and add that information to the plans. We determined that was a one and a half inch line and that was probably too small for a 15 apartment building. So the plan was revised to show a new two inch domestic water line. Um, Deputy Chief Edward Williams uh, from fire noted that mulch is not allowed up against the building and we're not showing any on the landscape plan for this building. Uh, Ms. Raza, I'm saying that right? Uh, stated at the um, tech review meeting that the street parking space is removed from the plan, which we had done. Uh, so we're not accounting for those as any kind of for the project. Uh, Rob May and Deputy Chief Williams noted that the vinyl fence uh, supposed to write for the dumpster enclosure previously is flammable. Um, and they asked for a more robust dumpster enclosure. And so therefore we proposed a heavy wooden fence to be placed as a dumpster enclosure around the dumpster. And Brian Creighton uh, noted that a water, new water connection would be needed and we will need a water permit, which we will take care of at the appropriate time. Um, Received a staff report as well. And I don't think uh, there was anything outstanding from, from that report. Uh, pretty much is the overview of the project. If there's any specific questions, uh, I'd be more than happy to address them. All right. Thank you, uh, Mr. Driscoll. Does uh, any of the board members have any questions or, or uh, thoughts they want to share? I, I love the new design. It's currently a eyesore. It's going to enhance that area. That's really needed. I think it's a good plan. I think it is. Yeah. It, it I is. agree too. I think it's it's a we. I've looked at this plan a couple times, and um, I think it's a well-designed plan. And I think that neighborhood really needs it. So um, I I don't really have any questions. Uh, do we have uh, any other comments? Uh, do we have anybody? Uh, is the public anybody uh anybody in the public would like to comment on this project please raise your hand so we can recognize you again there is a uh raise your hand icon at the bottom of this page if you 
allow your mouse to hover um, over this area. Mr. Chairman, can may I make a comment? Yes, please. Yes, Chief Williams. Just, just on, on the dumpster enclosure, um, wood will probably burn just as good as plastic. Um, I would recommend a, a heavy chain link with slats or um, have them take a look at the nice uh, concrete block enclosure that they did at uh, 24, 27 Pleasant Street, something like that. The one that uh, Joffrey and Atoli did. It, that's a beautiful dumpster enclosure and it, it very uh, attractive to the neighborhood. But just as a suggestion. Okay, we could certainly uh, change that on the plan as a condition of approval if there's nothing else that uh, the board would. You, you know what that is, Mr. Driscoll? That's the old print shop there across from the fire station. Is that correct, Chief? That's correct. Yeah, okay. And that's just a suggestion. That's not a condition of approval, but it's a it's a it's a suggestion. Apparently, you're referring to some architectural uh, block work, I guess. So, yeah. Mr. Chairman, there are no uh, hands up from the public, so you may proceed. All right. Would someone care to make a motion? Motion to approve site plan approval, 30 into Vale Street. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion to approve with a second. Uh, vote on the roll call, please. Larry Hassan? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. Reggie Thomas? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. Bob Pelagi is a yes. All right, Mr. Driscoll, looks like you're all set. Great, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Have a good night, Thank you. All right, next agenda item is preliminary subdivision. This property at 15 Farrington Street, I think. Two lot subdivision, that's J.K. Holmgren. I might have mixed that. No. Um, Phil Nazarello is doing that, I believe. Oh, I'm here as well, Tim. You are, okay, where did you go? Where did you go? Okay. Oh, you're still on, that's why. Okay. okay. Is Attorney Nisrell representing? I'm guessing he is. He is. He is. Okay. Yeah. Good evening, Attorney Nisrell. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I'm here, um, and I would not be without Mr. Scott Ferry. Uh, this is a, a piece of property on 50 Farrington Street whereby we are looking to subdivide the uh, lot, which is one of the largest lots on that street, approximately three times that of the other developed lots, looking to subdivide it into two equal sections uh, and being able to build a structure, a residential structure on the one that would be uh, deemed vacant. This is an R2 zone. And I believe that the uh, requirement is 7,500 square feet. We are short of that. We would be proceeding to the zoning board asking for relief. And I think there are uh, uh, certainly credible reasons that the zoning board, uh, I would like to suggest would consider this favorably once uh, we have the approval of the, um, the subdivision plan and, or the preliminary plan uh, that Scott would lay out at this time. Scott, if you wanna go over that, then I'll just, uh, I'll, I'll come in after. Sure. Thank you, Attorney Nezarella. Scott Ferry, Home Grand Engineering. Uh, Mr. Chairman, board members, as Attorney Nezarella said, uh, a large piece of property, about 140 feet of frontage on Farrington. We're just looking to divide it into two. Uh, one lot for the existing home at number 50 Farrington. And then the second lot, lot B, would be for a proposed two family. Uh, as you can see on the site plan uh, that Mr. May just brought up, all of the property around us uh, is a little bit less in area than us, uh, 5,500, 6,800 square feet, and they're all uh, two family or larger uh, residential structures. So our proposal uh, fits in with the neighborhood in both density and in lot area. Uh, so as Attorney Nezrell said, just looking for preliminary approval tonight that will allow us to go to the Board of Appeals. Uh, Attorney Mazzarella will make his case at the Board of Appeals, and if successful, we'll be back before you folks uh, in a few months with a definitive plan. So the only thing, Scott, just to be clear, and Attorney Nazarella, the only thing you need relief from is uh, 
it is what frontage and area on the one lot or just yeah front is yeah I, I I was uh mistaken in the lot area my zoning bylaw says 5,000 square feet for some reason uh so I assumed I was okay with lot a having 7,400 square feet uh and lot b having 8,000 there's enough area uh, as attorney Nezrell said the zoning is 7,500 for a two-family so uh the plan that we submit to the ZBA, I'll revise it to go from 7488 to 7500. So in that case, our uh, requested relief from the planning board would be the frontage and the width, 100 feet of frontage required, and we have 70 feet. So that you, I see what you mean. So that you, although you, although I mean you're at two, you're in an at two zone, but your use is single family. Um, but I see what you mean. So you could you could eliminate the request for a zoning relief for area by bumping that up to 75 right right and then just as a point of order i guess the existing structure uh is as you said in an r2 zone but it is a three family so that would need uh relief from area to be a three family it's an existing three family home and is assessed as such yeah, so even though we can give it the 7500 we'll still be short I think it then becomes 12,000, I believe, if it's a three family. Yes. And what about what about the parking one? What about the parking on lot A? They have a, a long driveway that goes off to the left side of the of the building, Mr. Blodgy. Uh, you know, that they that they use currently that they'll continue to use. But I, I, I don't show it on this plan, and it's a, a good point you're kind of bringing up there. I, I'll certainly show the individual spaces, uh, always something the Board of Appeals wants to see, that we have adequate parking. So I'll sure, certainly show that on the ZBA plan. And then and on the thing is, and, and to be clear, your house number 50 is an existing free family? Exactly. Yeah, you, you might want to note that on the plan as well. Yes, I know you're in a you're in a multifamily zone, but I think it may serve you to note that on the plan so that. Um, Agreed. I'll certainly make that addition to the ZBA plan. Well, what do we what do we think? Uh, this is a preliminary plan, so it's not a public hearing. I mean, are there enough? Revisions there that we want to see a revised copy of this, or what do the board members think? I mean, parking is parking is a is a parking is especially with a three family parking is a is a major concern. And if you want to alleviate having to go uh, asking for the relief on your area, I, I think you need to make a couple of revisions there. I think it's basically. I like the size of the lots, but I think you, you need to make some revisions there. That's my thought, but board members, so, what's, your, what's your thoughts? Are they allowed to go to zoning with a revised plan or do we need to see it prior to, is my question. You have the ability where the preliminary to um, pass it on as it exists, deny it, or make comment. Amend it. So you can stipulate what you want to see in the definitive plan, then would carry over to the ZBA. I think the, the example that we, we did one with you folks back six, maybe more than six months ago on North Cary Street, uh, where the preliminary plan, we showed a common driveway uh, to service the two lots. You folks approved the preliminary with the condition that if it got to definitive, you'd want to see two separate driveways and uh, separate services and things like that. So uh, we would certainly be happy if you could do that in this case, just to, to get us uh, moving to the ZBA. I'm fine with doing something like that. I don't know if anybody else has comments. I would agree. I'm, I'm okay with that as well. Okay, so what are the things so what are the conditions that we're talking about? We want him to demonstrate he's got a number one, he's got to label, label the house number 50 as an existing three family. He's got to show adequate functional parking, parking that works for the three family. 
He's going to adjust, apparently adjust the lot line to, to rebalance the lot area. Okay. What were the other concerns? Uh, I think that was it, Mr. Chairman. I think that was it. I missed the last part of that, Mr. Chair. Was we changing the lot lines or yes, he was gonna he want he's gonna adjust the areas. Adjust the areas. Yep. So that I if I'm understanding his he he's of the belief that he that'll be one less thing he'll be needing for relief from. Is that correct, attorney? Yeah, that's correct. Yep. And I, I can also assure you, I think those uh those criteria you stated, Mr. Chairman, are reasonable, but I can also assure you the Items number one and two, identification of the, uh, the, the uh, house as being a three family in parking, uh, closely analyzed and examined by the zoning board when we get there as well. Sure, uh, certainly, yeah. Parking is always a very, especially in a street like that, very significant. Anybody else have any other comments or suggestions? Okay. Uh, who, who's who's been keeping track of the notes so that they can make a, an effective motion? <laughs> I'll give it a shot. Give it a, give it a whirl. Motion to approve uh, preliminary subdivision 50 Farrington Street with the conditions that house number 50 will be labeled as an existing three family. will also show adequate parking and revision of the lot lines. Um, I might be dropping off a little bit here, but I'm pretty close. There might be a few more words I'm looking for here. Just to adjust the area. To adjust the area. I don't know if there was anything else. I have it. Thank you. Just lot line area to rebalance lots. Just lot line area to rebalance lots. Okay, if it's, if it's I'm just a question, uh, Pam. So if, the, if this plan is approved under those conditions, do, do the, does that plan come back to the planning department or do you, you not see it again? No, this has to come back as a definitive because this is only a preliminary. Yes, but I understand. But aren't they, isn't the, isn't the objective here to get before the use, utilizing this adjusted plan to get before to go to the zoning board. board so it is the zoning. It would be in, it would be in the letter that we would send a letter to the zoning board saying that they, they, you'd like to see these amendments to the plan so okay all right motions are made is there, is there a second i'll second the motion motions are made and seconded a vote on the roll call larry hassan yes tony gonzalez yes reggie thomas yes james sweeney yes bob palazzi is a yes so very good thanks for the help folks thank, thank you, you. have a good evening Bye. thank you And let's see, what have we got here? We have, uh, okay, this is the, this is the definitive subdivision. Let me just get caught up here. All right, so the next agenda item, this is a definitive subdivision. It is an 18 lot residential subdivision uh, and is listed as part of plot 97 Pleasant Street. Um, by W Engineering CLM Development. I think I've moved all the applicants. Move Charlie Macy, Evan, and Attorney Burke. Is there anybody else on your team? Jim, you're muted. I know. Uh, we're, we're all set there. Uh, okay. Good evening, Attorney well, Brick. Good, good evening, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I guess if your team is here, I guess you have the floor then. Great. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Plagi. Uh, uh, I thank you for uh, your assistance, and I also think, thank you for your work and professionalism on the planning board. Uh, I have the pleasure to represent uh, today uh, Charlie Macy of uh, CLM Development and Evan Watson, uh, engineer uh, with the project known as Amelia Estates. 
I, I became involved in this real estate uh, approximately three years ago when I was asked to assist uh, on another adjacent subdivision, uh, Cypress uh, uh, Estates, uh, that was uh, being presented by uh, Mr. George Carney. The Carney family also owns this real estate, uh, and it is uh, under agreement uh, with the uh, CLM uh, for a development of, uh, I believe, roughly uh, 18 lots. Uh, the uniqueness of this particular project, again, goes back uh, in that there was a, a substantial amount of community uh, discussion uh, and, and a community outreach before we started to uh, develop this roughly 41 acre site that was owned by the Carney family that extends from uh, Braymore Road uh, to uh, uh, Cypress uh, and uh, ultimately out uh, through uh, Chilton uh, to uh, uh, Pleasant Street. There was a, a great deal of concern among the existing Ward 1 counselor and a number of other uh, individuals representing the neighbors in the uh, Braymore and uh, uh, Cypress area to uh, try to prevent this property and being developed as a cut through street that would roughly run from Torrey through to Pleasant Street. So at that time, having taken the, uh, uh, the comments uh, and the suggestion of uh, numerous members of the uh, political family of the city of Brockton, we devised the utilization of the property that created roughly three subdivisions. I believe uh, we sat down with the planning department and provided what then was our vision uh, on how to accomplish the development of the property while at the same time uh, uh, assuaging the concerns of a number of the uh, elected officials of the city of Brockton. Toward that end, it was suggested that we would roughly develop three subdivisions. First, Cyprus that came before you as a preliminary plan, and I believe will shortly be before you as a definitive plan in which Ed Jacobs is doing the engineering work. Uh, that uh, was brought before the Zoning Board of Appeals and we received permission for the subdivision with an area that met like this one does, all of the area requirements of the zoning ordinance of the city of Brockton. Plus at the same time, uh, it uh, had some lots that required uh, uh, a variance from the 175 foot requirement of the zoning ordinance. The uh, next development uh, involves this particular parcel in which we are now seeking also to create uh, an extension of uh, Westbury, I believe, into uh, the 18 lots, which again, will meet the requirements of the uh, area width and size of the ordinance. However, there is a, a shortage of a, a frontage that we'll be looking for waivers. We're also uniquely involved in a process, Mr. Chairman, in which I believe the city is changing their perspective and process and how they wanna handle these matters. And as a result, we're filing a definitive subdivision and under the subdivision control law, we're respe respectfully requesting that this board grant relief from the frontage requirement as they are authorized to do under the subdivision control law. Uh, we submitted a waiver, uh, and I think there's some confusion about that because I, I believe uh, uh, we saw Rice's report uh, earlier today, but I know I, I saw a definitive uh, waiver a request that went with the, the application. And if it somehow got misplaced, we'll be happy to uh, submit it to you. But in that waiver request, among other things, it's requesting that this board issue a finding as required under the statute uh, that the uh, particular subdivision as this, that a waiver of the front requirement in the zoning ordinance of the city of Brockton is in the public interest and not inconsistent with the intent and purpose of the subdivision control law. A reduction from 175 feet to 125 feet is requested. That in addition to a couple of other waivers, one of which is the length of the cul-de-sac. 
there has since arisen, uh, since we provided our preliminary materials and submitted uh, to the board, some questions now as to the length of this particular cul-de-sac, which may exceed uh, the dimensional requirements authorized under our zoning ordinance and revised ordinance of the city of Brockton. Toward that end, uh, we had a meeting uh, relating to the public safety issues that could arise from that problem. And we were, we were pleased to have the assistance uh, and uh, I, I guess educational assistance of uh, Deputy Chief uh, Williams uh, in which we sat down and discussed some objective possibilities of relieving concerns about public safety matters. That resulted in our developing a plan that Evan will show you, which provides for continuing access, uh, the potential for continuing access through Cyprus, so that there would not be any problems related to emergency vehicles, fire, police, ambulance, and related. So this is here after we provided notice, uh, I guess on a preliminary hearing, I understand that this is going to be, in fact, extended, and we're going to have a, uh, another uh, form of notice in which the public hearing uh, with the public are going to be invited. But today we're providing you with the information that we have and we have provided to the planning board and others within the city, and we're looking for your uh, assistance and comment. Uh, and toward that end, Evan, I'd like you to walk through the subdivision at this time and also identify the uh, characteristics that required you to provide a request for waivers. Very good. Um, I may, Mr. Chairman, uh, I'd like to present my screen. Okay with everybody. Um, can everybody see, let's see, I think I, I shared the wrong thing, one moment. And we can start with this. Does everybody see this uh, Google Earth uh, image here? Yes. Okay. So I just want to familiarize ourselves with the area um, so we know what we're talking about. This is on the west side of Brockton. You see uh, Route 24 and Route 123 Torrey Street. And the site we're talking about is situated in between Pleasant Street and um, Braymore in Cyprus. So we're right in here. So the does the, the let me let me let me interject, Mr. Watson. So does this yes, aerial view does this show the most current development? So that we're as we're looking at it, does this show everything developed this, up, in, up into real time? Um, this photograph was taken in October of 2020, and the most recent uh, Chilton Road um, development is shown here. Yes. Okay. And then um, there's some. A recent thing here. So yeah, up until October 2020, that's how current this is. Very good, thank you. Um, so the, the area that we're looking at, as Attorney Burke indicated, is just the uh, northern um, property here. So this road was constructed originally with a cul-de-sac. However, there was a provision added here that's not in the a residential lot to allow access to this property. And this cul-de-sac is actually provided on an easement. So we would expect that this road would be extended. We would have an intersection that would go to the north and would go to the west. I can share. How do you gain access to that cul-de-sac that's gonna lead into that new? Oh, I can go back. So the access for that, you come off of Pleasant Street and you um, come down Chiltern. It actually breaks off into two roads and then we have um, the access here. The current owner actually has, uh, has retained property rights to this road and he owns this uh, parcel right here. So we're able to, to do those modifications to tie in. Does that answer your question, Tony? Yeah. Yes, thank you. Um, I've tried to switch my view to the design plans. Can everybody see the design plan? Yeah. Okay. Um, so as 
such, we've prepared a set of um, definitive design plans. Uh, we've had definitive design subdivision plans, existing conditions plans, grade drainage profiles and details um, to meet your submission requirements. This is the existing plan. Again, we have about 17 acres we're looking at here. Uh, let me back up here. So if you look at this property, this shows how Braymore Road ends. Uh, Cypress Road comes into the property and Westbury Road comes onto the property. So by right, if we look at the subdivision rules and regulations um, and we followed those, the course of action we would likely take would be to take Westbury Road and extend it down to Braymore Road. And we would also likely come up, develop that and come into Cypress Drive. It's my understanding, and I was not involved in the prop project at that time, but that this was presented to um, the planning board and um, other agencies of the town um, to, to illustrate how that would go through. And it was worked out that this was uh, the best course here. So we divide it into 20 lots. Again, if you look at the geometry of uh, the lots, we all meet, we have the shape factor, it's indicated on the next sheets. Uh, where we have the 125 foot width for the 100 feet, 100 feet back. Um, we do have a, a couple lots. And again, because of the narrow geometry of, of this section of the property, in order to get enough area, they do come back a little bit, a little oddly shaped. However, those areas um, are areas that we're going to be using for drainage. And I'll get to that in a moment. So that shouldn't cause any conflicts with any of the neighboring parties. Um, here's our existing conditions plan. We had the uh, photogrammetrist deliver some topography for the site. Um, so we have a high point of the site up to the west and everything essentially drains all the way over to the farm property on the east. There is an existing detention basin that comes off of Westbury um, and there is an existing garage here and then you can see some test pit symbols. Um, Charlie and I went out and we did some test pits to take a look at the soil to make sure we didn't have uh, excessive bedrock or uh, unusable soils. And those all came out well. You can see the results of the test pits here. Then when we overlay our design. We're able to take the drainage from just our site. Uh, the drainage for Westbury Road is taken all into Westbury Road um, all of our drainage, we're going to be picking up and bringing into a new detention basin here. And that will also take all any of the water that's flowing down the hill as well. The existing detention basin that's on easement from Westbury Road, uh, we'd like to move that uh, closer to the edge of the property. And that, that size to um, basically the same size or larger than what's already there. Again, these are just a little more detailed view showing the, the grading of the site. Um, and then this indicates the, the tension basin is in an easement on both sides that would go to the city. And what's nice about that is some of these areas of the lots that get skinny and relatively unusable, we we're able to aggregate those together into the easement areas so that if somebody did put up a fence, they could only put up a fence up to the easement and you wouldn't have you know, lines of parallel fences running um, in everybody's backyard. The plans and profiles with the piping um, all designed. That's these plans. Then uh, we have construction details. Um, we did receive a comment to um, make some modifications to our uh, typical cross section, which we can easily accommodate. We can do that. Um, one notable item, um, you'll see that on our plans, we show a um, pressure sewer lateral in, in this device here, a pump chamber. That is because if I go back to the overall plan, the existing sewer manhole is about 30 feet higher than most of the, the subdivision than this intersection. So I'm unable to get gravity sewer to, to get there. So 
we're proposing a, a private sewer made of uh, pump stations for each individual home that would go to a low gravity sewer pipe that would then go into the town sewer, city sewer, excuse me. We did meet with the sewer department. Um, it was their recommendation that we would put the sewer line because it was private under the sidewalk uh, to make it easier to maintain versus if it needs to be uh, modified and, and dig up through the middle of the road. Um, of course, that's, you know, that was one of the waivers that um, we were looking for on the cross section to modify that cross section, but, but that can be put wherever it needs to go for certain. Um, I can bring up the, the waiver list. Um, so again, streets be no longer than 700 feet. So we were hoping to obtain that waiver so that we could make uh, response to the neighborhood. Again, this is a relatively unique property on how it's its size, its uh, shape of, of its narrowness in some areas and how it's accessed on three sides and it's in a, you know, a, an established neighborhood. Um, <coughs> and um, we asked for a waiver for street lighting. Um, again, we were trying to match what we saw on the neighboring um, subdivision. Oh, I, I don't think you can see my, um, I'm sorry. I'll bring this up. Is the waiver list shown on the screen? It is. Okay, thank you. Um, so we, our intent with most of these waivers was to match the subdivision that came in on the abutting property. So um, I didn't see any street lighting there. Um, so I was asking for that, but certainly we could provide street lighting. Um, the sidewalk, the typical cross section shows sidewalk from the roadway all the way to the right of way. Um, in the neighboring subdivision, it's, it's five feet um, of asphalt, and then it provides a grass strip, um, would still ask, you know, do the granite curving. And then I wasn't sure if um, fire alarm boxes, if that was still a thing now that we have cell phones and whatnot. I, I haven't seen one of those in a while, but uh, certainly if, if we want to have uh, alarm boxes, we can, we can certainly provide that. Um, the last thing that I'd like to share with you um, Attorney Burke indicated that we were working on providing some form of emergency access. So we had a meeting with a um, representative from the fire department, and we presented to him that we could through an easement at a 20 foot wide gravel access road to connect the future uh, other projects to Cyprus and to Braymore. And what that would do is essentially address the concerns of why we have this requirement for shorter roadways, because if there's some type of problem that blocks the road an emergency vehicle could get through um, this these easements would also serve to extend the water line. Um, so that would improve the, the water pressure for everybody in that neighborhood, essentially. Um, and it would be easy to maintain. We'd have a, a gravel access road and we'd have a gate. We think it's something of this style. And, you know, in Brockton, it's something you probably don't see very often. Um, you know, a, a 20, Lots cul-de-sac might not be something that's done all the time. Um, I live in Rainham and, you know, we, we have a lot of little subdivisions with cul-de-sacs all over the place. So um, this is something that you see on, on a dead end road. So uh, we presented some of this information to him. Uh, he's taking it under advisement and, and reviewing that with uh, his colleagues. And we're expecting to hear back from him as to uh, viability of, of such a access um i was wondering if you could go back and talk a little bit about the um, drainage of the site and how the sheet flow is running down uh what is it uh, west to east but there is also some issue with how it flows towards or if it flows towards cypress and Braymore. very good so I can certainly do that. 
Um, if we go to the existing Sorry, conditions. Sorry, Mr. Chairman. Well, that's okay. No, I'm, I'm, thank you, Mr. May. Well, here's the existing conditions. Excuse me, Mr. Plan. Chair. We're about yeah. to lose a uh, member. Uh oh, how's that? He has to go to another meeting. And who would that be, please? That would be Reggie, and it is also his last meeting, so. Oh, is he still on? Uh, he may have. I'm sorry. Oh, he's oh, still here. Okay. Are, you, are you leaving at this time, Reggie? If I could, yeah. I'm sorry, I have a trustees meeting at 8.15. All up. right. Well, the time is at hand. Well, all right. Well, thank you. And thank you for your participation on the planning board. We really appreciate your time and your effort. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. I'll send you guys an email. Bye. Yeah. Bye, Reggie. Keep in touch. Take care, guys. Thank you. May I continue, Mr. Chairman? We're all set? Yes. Okay, yeah. thank you. No problem. So if we look at this existing conditions plan, this is something that's easy for an engineer to read, but it looks like a bunch of squiggly lines for most people. So I'll zoom in a little bit to describe this. Um, each one of these lines represents a one foot change in elevation. And these are labeled for every foot. So you can see here we're at elevation 223. And the flow of water is going to run perpendicular to these lines. So Essentially, the water is going to flow down through this way. We have one component of the drainage that does come into the woods to the south. And then the rest of the drainage essentially comes down into the farmland uh, to the east. And we did do um, our roadway will intercept a lot of the water that actually flows towards the south and we'll pick it up into the drainage system and bring it into a detention basin, which will slow the, the uh, rate of runoff that comes off the site. So what will end up happening is the amount of runoff, the amount of area that drains to that piece of property to the south will be drastically reduced. And then where we have impervious area being added, we're taking that into our detention basin. I presented that with calculations. We did do the calculations for that um, and, and show that that all works. And that's. Um, all right. Does that, does that answer your question, Mr. May? Or? Yes, it does. Thank you. All right. Um, okay. And does that, does that conclude your presentation at this time, Mr. Watson? Um, it does for me. I don't know if um, Attorney Burke or uh, Charlie has anything else to add, but I'd be. Um, I'm sure there's a lot more information we'll be providing as this thing rolls along, Mr. Chairman, but I, I think that's good enough for tonight. Yes. All right. Well, this was filed, as, just to be clear, this was filed as a, de a definitive subdivision, was it, Pam? Yes, it is. Okay. So it's a, it's a public hearing and, and I'm sure that there's, because it was that, was that, it must have been advertised as a public hearing. So I'm sure there'll be public that want to speak. Um, and as I'm sure that you're aware, I mean, because it's, it's, it's an ongoing process, uh, there'll be a lot of discussion, a lot of deliberation, there's going to be a lot of input. Um, and we, we just we were discussed about uh, outside outside peer review. I, I think it's, I think it's my personal feeling. I think everybody benefits from that. Um, um, outside peer review. I think Mr. May and I spoke briefly about that. Um, that has begun. Oh, hey, I'm sorry, pardon me. It has begun. It has begun. He was very proactive. Oh, thank you. I didn't realize that. Thank you for that correction. I wasn't aware that that's already been. So Beta has that? Yes. Wonderful. Thank you. So, and I think I need to get back in touch with Mr. Macy about some, some things, but... Yes, beta has started. Okay, so I'll kick off the comments. I mean, I, I did spend a little time with the plan. Um, so I assume based on the lot shape, I think we use the, the uh, reference, Mr. Watson, to some, some of the irregular lot shapes. You, you're trying to meet or exceed the 30,000 30, square feet. Is that, what the, is that what the goal was? 
All of uh, yes, all the lots meter exceed thirty thousand square feet. So that you would only be asking, in theory, you'd only be asking the zoning board for relief from frontage. <clears throat> uh, we would like to ask this board for relief from frontage. Uh, maybe, Mr. Burke, you could describe that a little better. Well, again, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, that's that's something that I believe the city is in the process of making a change in procedure. Yeah, it is. It is. And and that's what we're doing. This is your first trial run. Uh, we're, yeah. we're, we're providing you a subdivision and we're looking for waiver from frontage. Yeah. And, and the waiver thing is a catch-22 in the sense that because there's so much deliberation, especially when you get into uh, outside peer review, on the, there's so much deliberation and contribution to the discussion, as Attorney Burke knows, from the part of the board members, from the part of the community, the abutters, the counselors, we typically wait until probably the end of the process to make our decision on waiver waivers because of that reason, because there's so much input, discussionary input, in, 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 into shaping the, the final, the final, uh, the final decision on the subdivision. So, and, and I know from, I've been on that side of it. So I know from a, a design standpoint, you'd like to know as much as you can know up front, but it's kind of a catch 22, but um, anyway, those, those were the lot shape, uh, which I, the lot shape, I, I think, uh, I appreciate you're trying to, you're, you're trying to maintain the minimum 30,000, but, um, I, I think that the, well, I can't, I certainly want to be careful not to speak for the Zoning Board of Appeals, but it would appear to me that most recently the Zoning Board has been, um, let's say, open or amenable to lots in the hot, in, in the 20,000, 25,000 range. Um, th those lot configurations that you're showing um, would, would give me some concern. And the other thing is the discussion, the philosophical discussion of the, the length of the road, what constitutes safety, what constitutes access. And the interesting part about that is Mr. May and I were talking about that today. Every community has a different definition of what is the length of a maximum dead end street, but ours is 700 nonetheless. So uh, that's gonna be part of the discussion process. Do any of the other board members have any, any anything else you'd like to add or kick off, I should say, with? Your concerns or your comments, questions? Uh, Mr. Chair, it's Larry. Yes, Larry. So if um, if a waiver was granted on the roadway that they're looking for, does that, if, and it might actually be a question for um, Chief Williams too, does, does that make a difference with public services and all that too? How do you how do you mean do you mean you mean public mean well, emergency? Well, so road? now you're extending the roadway. Um, is this? I mean, it's it's not a cul-de-sac, so there. I mean, it's it's fine for the emergency vehicles to get in there, correct? Yes. Okay. Are you um, talking about that? You're talking about the emergency dirt dirt exit right, or entrance, right? Yeah. Um. So your question is, does it? Would that would that facilitate the average right family passenger vehicle? I don't know. Right, which wouldn't, but we're not looking to use that as a throughway road or a or a cut through. We're not looking to extend that, right? They are not. Okay. No. All right. Um, Could you post the drawings that, or, or re re display the drawings that you did yeah. up there, sir? Sure. Sure. Is this drawing good, or would you like to see the? Uh, that, that's that's fine. Okay. Um, so if if I could address the board for just a second, from Pleasant Street to the very end of Westbury is a little over a thousand feet, and then they're going to add another thousand feet of uh, dead end uh, to this to this project or to this this road network. Excuse me. So. Uh, on previous subdivisions that have been before the board in the last year, we have had um, uh, members of elected officials uh, concerned about the extension of um, roadways that exceed uh, 700 feet or the extension of, of uh, dead ends that, that exceed a couple 700 feet. 
And the reason is, uh, amongst other things, is, is public safety. Now, if a tree, you know, and, and, and having these easements in between the two properties or the three properties um, could certainly alleviate the concern for emergency vehicles. But um, that then leaves the residents of the area stuck. So if you can see where his hand cursor is right now on the drawing, if a tree were to fall there on Chilton, all of these houses are now trapped, uh, waiting for somebody to come out and get out, you know, and, and cut down this tree. And that's one of the reasons why we were proposing um, that the landowner uh, think about creating some sort of interconnection between these uh, three subdivisions. Uh, we do not, you know, anticipate that um, there is going to be a lot of cut through traffic simply because it is such a circuitous route to get to um, Braymore or Cypress as opposed to um, remaining on, on Rockland. So um, we had a meeting with the developer. We, we started talking uh, about this uh, probably a week ago. And that's one of the things that um, uh, we hope that the board will take under consideration. So to be, to be clear on your comment or your concern, Mr. May, is, is, is the point of your comment that you'd like to see this uh, design go out to Braymore to, to, make, to make a circuitous route? Is that what you're suggesting? Um, if, if I could share uh, my screen briefly, uh, there are three drawings, uh, three subdivisions that are being um, considered. Uh, let me turn on my annotate. There's the current subdivision that's in front of you right now. There is a uh, subdivision off of Cypress and then a third subdivision proposed, or at least considered, off of Braymore. Um, and what we had suggested that the developer look at is, is interconnecting, rather than you know complete dead ends, if Braymore then connected to Cypress, Cypress connected to Letty Street, I think is what they're calling it. Um, and then back up to Westbury and out Chilton, it is no longer a straight shot through, kind of like you would find on, on Rockland Street. It is a bit of a circuitous route for people to try to drive through here. But if a tree does go down here, I have options now if I own a house back here. I like that. I mean, I, I appreciate what you're, what you're alluding to. Um, if it's doable, I, I don't know how realistic it is, but I, but I take your point about the having having the ability to have options to move about the development. Mr. Chairman, if I may add, uh, the the scenario that uh, Mr. May uh, uh, artfully is is suggesting, and and certainly I understand it, uh, but the the key is the public safety access for 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 fire health and safety the inconvenience access could happen at a 500 foot cul-de-sac there isn't any different i i believe that you're at least we're a little bit in the middle of this mr chairman and members of the planning board because in good faith we came out and said how do we do this best for the community and essentially the three subdivisions that you're looking at was the answer. And in fact, that was disclosed uh, when we first came before the planning board on Cyprus for our preliminary. Uh, that was essentially disclosed to the zoning board of appeals when we got approved on the Cyprus. Uh, and I can tell you as, and again, <laughs> we're a little bit in the middle of this, as early as today, there were elected officials of the city of Brockton that were reaffirming uh, their, their lack of interest of having a cut through street going from Braymore to Pleasant, Pleasant Street. So we're trying to make this work for everybody. Right, was that in there in their requesting that, was that a little, was that, was that bordering on self-serving? 
Mr. Burke, I want uh, to... I, uh, no, I think it's bordering on what they think was best for the community, uh, Mr. Chairman. Okay, fair enough. Again, it is at the board's discretion to grant those waivers, not the ZBA. Uh, no, there's never been any question about that. Well, Mr. Chairman, could I make a comment? Yes. I got involved in this a couple of weeks ago and uh, the city has a 700 foot length. I found a, a study done back in 2004 of all, all our 181 Massachusetts communities. And they ranged, most of them were under 100,000. There were a few that were over a thousand and I'll uh, send Pam a link. Maybe she can send that out to people. I also started asking around um, why we have the 700 and nobody could give me a definitive answer, but one of the answers which makes sense is we carry 800 feet of large diameter holes so we could hand stretch it down a street if we had to. And I, I think that's the case in most places. Over the past couple of years that I've been um, observing this board, we've kind of stretched that 700 feet to 1400 feet, 1200 feet. And I, I don't think I've dug deep enough into it. Um, I've started looking a lot of, of the cul-de-sacs in the city of Brockton. Um, so I think the largest one I found so far is 1800 feet. Um, I'm continuing on. And it is a public safety, whether we can get apparatus to the other side of any sort of incident. Um, I met with Mr. Burke and uh, Mr. Macy and Mr. Watson and a couple other people yesterday. They proposed this fire department access road and I'm in the process of um, investigating it. I've got calls into the Rainham Fire Chief to talk to him how he feels about it. One of my concerns is the maintenance of that road and who's gonna take care of it. When we get the 24 inch snowstorm, who's gonna plow it? And right now it would be okay why Mr. Macy has the project ongoing, but once the homeowner association takes over, how are we gonna be able to enforce them to do that without having to take them to court or do something of that nature? So the access road, although I'm not 100% against it, um, it, it has a lot of um, questions to be answered so far. Uh, and both subdivisions, both um, uh, Amelia Estates and um, the one on the other side need to get together and design that together. And I think they both need to make some sort of presentation um, together because once Mr. Macy starts building, we need that road in place. Uh, the second item that we were very concerned about is 2,100 feet of uh, a dead end water main and how much water we could actually get up to that dead end water main. And, and uh, that was a concern. Uh, Mr. Burke and his team um, have graciously agreed to um, meet up the three proposed subdivisions um, <clears throat> with an easement so that we can connect the water so that we'll have free flowing water throughout the, the area. So that one, I think we, we can get um, taken care of the water. Um, I'm not sold on the access road yet, but this is the beginning of the process and um, we work diligently to uh, see what we can come up with. All right, Chief, thank you. Um, any other board members or, or the planning department, any other concerns or I mean, obviously, that's not something that's going to get resolved tonight, obviously. Um, I, 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 for one, I'll be honest and tell you that I wasn't aware that there was a, as Mr. Burke has alluded, he said that this, that this thing, we're more in the middle of it than in the beginning. Can you bring up that conceptual plan again, the one that shows the, um, the one that shows the penciled up three, three subdivisions? Just, just that's not my plan that I think is Rob's. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I had no idea, for example, I'll be right up front and tell you that I had no idea that this, I guess you'd call this a concept plan. I didn't know that this concept plan was on the discussion table and that it had gotten any traction. I didn't know that. Can you speak to that, Mr. Burke? I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how to describe traction. What, what, what I'll suggest to you is that what we did do is we laid out options for the community. And one of the options was a, a, a uh, as of right, traditional subdivision that went from Braymore uh, with, with uh, 
uh, cul-de-sacs off of the main road right out to Pleasant Street. That can be done. In fact, I think we would get more lots if that was done. However, that is exactly not what the representatives of the community that we discussed wanted. I can assure you from my hearing before the planning of the Zoning Board of Appeals, uh, when uh, I would say roughly about 50 neighbors from Braymore showed up uh, and they were finally suggested that no Cypress is a cul-de-sac and is not gonna connect to Braymore. Uh, that's about the only time they were quieted uh, as the uh, meeting uh, uh, dragged on. So this plan, you're right, is a conceptual plan uh, without the uh, interconnections that uh, uh, obviously Rob has uh, identified, he recently added, uh, that was uh, run by various members of the community as an option as to what could work uh, in terms of an orderly development, a safe development, and not having the uh, impact on one of the more uh, how would you put it, uh, uh, senior neighborhoods in the community uh, throughout that area. And uh, that's, that's where we are. And when I say we're in the middle of it, we are. Uh, we're trying to do the best we can to make the best product we can uh, and, and keeping in mind not only public safety, but uh, the ultimate desires of the, uh, what's best for the community. And we, we, I think we've stepped up because we gave up lots in terms of uh, agreeing to pursue uh, the three lot uh, subdivision plan that's before you, or at least uh, in theory, what's before you. All right, thank, thank you for that expanded explanation. I appreciate that. Uh, okay, well, as we said, it's a, it's a, it's a work in progress. Um, do, do you have anybody at this time? Do you identify anybody, Mr. May, at this time that wants to be on the record? Um, yes, Mr. John. Canova, I'm probably butchering your name, but um, you we opening be... the meeting to public. Well, it's, it's an advertised public hearing. I thought you said it's a definitive subdivision, which was an advertised public hearing. Do we have a choice on that? If I'm if I'm out of order, please tell me. I thought I thought it was the city attorney has has. Um, advised against that because of some issues that may exist with the notification. Oh, sorry, that's uh, right, okay. And so we were hoping to um, have the applicant present and then um, ask, uh, we have staff and board comments that will go back to the applicant to make uh, future revisions and then we were going to, uh, she suggested then when the newer plan comes out and there is a second notification with some better location information um, that uh, we then reopen and uh, take public testimony. Okay, fair enough, yep, thank you for that. Um, okay, again, are, are there any other comments uh, from the part of the planning board you've seen what the proposal is, and uh, you've heard the discussions. Uh, again, it's an ongoing process. Uh, I, I do think we, we need to see a second um, entrance for public safety, for fire trucks, et cetera. But um, I remember, is this the area where there's three houses on Pleasant Street and the development was developed behind them and there was yes. water drainage into Exactly. Yes. yes. That is so the has, same area. Yep. So has exactly. all because this is my, not my forte. So, um, Mr. Chair, it's yours. Has the water drainage been addressed so that? Yes, that, that issue. That issue that that unfortunately came up at that planning board meeting. I, I know the one you're meeting. You're talking about that was that was the developer that developed those street front lawns, lots along Pleasant Street, and he has since addressed those issues, and that's been quieted. Yep. Okay. Yep. But that's but okay. to your point. This is this development is behind that. It's actually behind the cul-de-sacs that that the engineer behind outlined. And is, it's behind that those three houses. And could it add to or create further issues for the those three houses that are on Pleasant? 
Well, is, is, assuming the post-construction runoff is addressed as Mr. Watson has suggested, I would suggest not. But I mean, that's a question for which you have to ask. Uh, he's not even aware of what we're discussing, but I assume that he'll, I mean, in development, you have to be held responsible not to negatively impact an abutting landowner. I mean, that's, and he's, he's, he'll be held to that standard, so. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, if there's no other comments, concerns, questions, um, and, and again, I'm sure we're gonna learn more as the, as the outside peer review, that would be beta, uh, develops his comments and his concerns, the board and the public is gonna learn more. So it's a process. I would suggest, Mr. Chairman, what probably would work for us if you continue it to a date certain that uh, uh, provides enough time to do whatever the planning board thinks it needs to do for publication notice. Certainly, um, yes, and that's the publication because it's going to be. It's going to be, but we don't know. Can will we, we play? Will we run the legal? And you're going to have to re-notify a butters. I've already talked to the city solicitor and I'm not sure I am uh, because we provided sufficient notice. Uh, okay. But I'm well, happy to work that out. I'm happy to provide a, a regular mailing. We I, are in I, I believe also. that was discussed, regular mailing. Yeah, I, I'm happy to do that for the board. Uh, it, uh, it, 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 Mr. Chairman, it, it, there was a huge number <laughs> of, uh, of uh, certified mailings uh, that went out. Uh, in this particular process. Yeah, so in the radius of notice, yeah. Yeah, right. So uh, yeah, what, what we'd like to do is we'd like it continue to a date certain and then uh, give, give everybody sufficient time to be able to work around that date. Sounds what good. Would that date like, be? The question well, comes, uh, do we know, can we uh, ballpark how long, how long is beta gonna take? In, in order to have an effective next meeting, I'm, I'm gonna respectfully suggest that you'd wanna have at least something from beta. Oh, I, I, we want a productive meeting. So I agree with you, Mr. Chairman. Right. <laughs> I mean, if, if, if we're talking, it's, it's now uh, early April, where if we were talking the, the, the middle of May, I think that would be sufficient. The June meeting? Because you've just begun your- You're well, looking you, at the you, June meeting? You've got, you're on, technically you're on your, it, it, does his, Kim, do you know, or Rob, do you know, does the original filing with the city clerk, does that start as time clock of the 145 days? It yeah, does. It, does. It, it does, yeah. Okay, so you're, you're only, you've only spent roughly, I think you're stamped in at the beginning of March, so you're only spent 30 days. I'll, I'll speak for the client here and he can shoot me later. Yeah, I think the June meeting is probably makes a lot of sense. It'll give the an operative time for a beta to have a, a detailed analysis and more importantly, by Evan to respond to some of that analysis so that we may have a revised plan coming into the board for the meeting. And, and realistically, as we all know, you may, you may find, you may be in a spot where you may have to ask for a continuance, which is pretty much and standard care. It's been done before. It's been done before. <laughs> yes, it has. All right, so we, we're gonna, we have a continuance until June. What is the date of the June meeting, please, Pam? Uh, June 1st. June 1st, here you go. Um, I do want to make an announcement though that we have uh, some people who have been sending um, Q and A <coughs> questions and we've been trying to answer them as we go. And I am trying to figure out how those are saved. Um, because is, it, that is, is, it appropriate, a, is it appropriate Mr. May to just to put a message out to the general public that will be open at the June meeting? It will be open to public comment at the June meeting? Uh, yes, and I, I have notified some people um, that uh, that this will be um, uh, available uh, for public comment at that time. Okay. Well, but this is the This is the advice of the city solicitor, so I don't mean to throw her under the bus, but... I just did. And, and for everyone writing these questions and wanting to be heard, you can be heard at that meeting. So yep. you're not being it ignored. Being you will continued. be heard. The meeting is you not will closed. Be heard. Right. Just so they understand. Okay. Well, if there's no other uh, comments or discussion for tonight, if someone wants to 
make a motion to continue this project to the June 1st meeting. I'll make a motion to continue this project to the June 1st meeting. Second. Okay, there's been a motion made and seconded. Uh, vote on the roll call. We don't, we no longer have Reg. Uh, Larry Hassan? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. And Bob Pelagi is a yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the planning board. Thank, Thank you, you for your time. Thank you. Thank Have you. a great evening. Okay, that's the last agenda item. So the, the last thing of business is the reorganization of the board. Um, as you know, Reggie has now left and uh, this will be my last meeting. So um, we, that lead, that will leave, and I'm just for the record, my 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 letter of resignation uh, continues through. I think it what was it, Pam, through Thursday or Friday, and I did that intentionally so that if you needed me to sign any plans, I didn't know if you needed any plans that were coming out of this meeting. Um, there probably are, but unfortunately, um, I'm in Florida, so okay. <laughs> anything that needs to be typed we'll need to wait till I get back. Wonderful. All right. Well, then that's, we tried. Um, okay. So, so, um, you know, you can come by and sign it then. Well, I'll be, I'll It'll take be dated for the date of this meeting. I'm sorry. They'll be dated for the date of this meeting. Okay. Very good. Okay. So we're back, uh, before us now is the reorganization of the board. So, um, uh, there's three, there's uh, four active members here tonight. Um, so we need to, um, I guess, first of all, nominate uh, a future chairman of the planning board. And uh, would someone, I think there's, there was a candidate that was suggested. So if someone- well uh, because you're leaving us, Mr. Chair, I did um, throw my hat in the ring for the position. Certainly would never fill your shoes, but uh, I am um, on the table for the position. Okay, so Tony Gonzalez is, is a candidate. She's entered us, herself into nomination as a candidate. Is there anybody else? All right. Um, I guess so. Uh, if there's nobody else, I guess we can close the nominations for, for chairman. I guess now we can go to vote. Um, vote on the roll call. So, Larry Hassan? Definitely yes. That's a, that was a definitely yes. <laughs> that was that was emphatic. She stepped up, so definitely yes. I support her. Well, I like that. And I'm sure she appreciates your support. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. Reggie, uh, not Reggie, um, pardon me, uh, James Sweeney? Yes. And Bob Pelagi is a resounding yes. And I personally think that I congratulate you and applaud you for stepping up to do that, Tony. I think you'll make a great chairman. Um, I, I really First female chairperson. Yeah, woman, <laughs> chairperson. Yeah. First female. First female chairperson of the Brockton Planning Board. History yeah. made. And yeah. uh, typically, from my, if memory serves, I think that um, we generally um, appoint, I don't, you call it a vice chair or what, what was the, was it a vice chair or was it a, an a, a, co chair? A, how about acting chairman? Because you're going to need, have a you can't clerk. Make, you're going to need, we have, a, we have a clerk and the clerk serves as vice chair. Okay, so who would like to be the clerk? Larry. <laughs> Larry, and, I, well, I well, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. I know Before you're a busy you nominate man. Larry. I think that was a great nomination. So I think nominations are uh, closed. Uh, 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 Pam can't nominate anybody. I can't nominate. Uh, I was just suggesting. No, she was, now, she was. Pam was just trying to. Well, she was just trying to help. Um, out. I'm dying to hear what Rob's trying to say. There is another position that we need to fill, and that is the uh, representative on the ZBA. Right, but and I was going to get to that, Mr. May. Right. But it, it's just in my, I'm not nominating anybody, but we might want to have someone with a little more experience 
and understanding of the zoning board to serve in that position as opposed to someone who is a rookie, even though he has a full head of hair? Oh, who, me? Who, who did you have? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So can we, can we, all right, can we finish with the clerk then? Mary, I, I think someone, I, it was very soft, but I think someone nominated you as Clark. Second. <laughs> and All that right. position entails what? <laughs> Reading the agenda and managing the meeting if the chair is not available. Tony's missing. Fine, I, I accept. <laughs> you're and breaking ties in the sign. Let the record show. So he's been nominated. He's been duly nominated as, as clerk. Uh, vote on the roll call. Larry Hassan? Yes. That was not a resounding yes. <laughs> Tony Gonzalez? Yes. James Sweeney? Yes. And Bob Pelagi is a yes. So we have a new we have a new chair and a new clerk. Congratulations. And now we need a representative to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Everybody understands what that entails, right? And didn't you, wasn't, wasn't, didn't you have a situation where you were splitting it between two, Pam? I was, um, and the zoning board was um, happy with that. Um, well, it was Larry and Tony that were, was splitting. You did a month, Larry did a month, Tony did a month. Is that still good with I'm Tony sure. and Larry? Sure, so well, can, can that, I... that, was, that was a temporary plan because yeah. uh, former, our former board member um, is no longer with us. So that, that was a set temporary plan. We need a permanent candidate for the zoning meetings. And is yeah, that... Ideally, you're right. Ideally, we need one person as a liaison between from the planning board to the zoning board of appeals. But as you can tell, that's kind of a difficult task. So a difficult choice, a difficult request. Are we at this point it? too technically short a planning board member? We are too now short, that... yeah. Yes. You are technically too short. So it, at this point, if you could agree to alternate, you're doing the next meeting, right? Yes. Next. Yes. So if so we're going to suggest that we continue to rotate and throw Mr. Sweeney into that rotation until we have two additional board members. And then from there, we'll see. Um, who's interested in the strongest candidate and vote from there. That sound okay good? That. I'm okay with so that. Move. Good. Okay. I missed that. Me? You wanna just go with that concept? Uh, there's no point in, there's no point I mean, in. You can leave them unfilled at this time and wait until the board is filled and then just, yeah. he would be the applicant for the May. Okay, and, and obviously it goes without saying the mayor is well aware that he's got two open spots on planning. Correct. I think he's got, I think he's got one or two open spots on alt alternates on zoning anyway, but. And I did chat with the mayor yesterday briefly, just saying, you know, what a huge loss it is to lose you, Mr. Chair, and that um, we do need a candidate with someone, someone with your background and knowledge and, and skill. Well, so was, um, um, we need to work together to find somebody that can come halfway close to you. Someone, someone had passed an ordinance, and I forget this goes back in the in the in the rolls and rosters of the city council, and it was a well-intended uh, ordinance. But they, it's you're supposed to have a registered person. I believe it's on the on the planning board, either registered engineer or registered land surveyor, and that's you know, an easy thing to request, it's not so easy to fill. It's just, they're, they're just, it's just not an easy thing to fill, so. Right. Yep, but that's, just. ideally that was, the, that was the, that was the goal. That was the, that was the goal. But in any case, um, um, mm -hmm. I, I will say congratulations and good luck to the planning board. I, I, hopefully I've made a contribution. I've enjoyed my time. It's interesting how these things come about because when I first got on, I, my first, uh, my first, I would just say attraction was to the Zoning Board of Appeals because I was before the Zoning Board of Appeals quite a bit in my work days. And I always liked the function of the Zoning Board. And I remember then Mr. Uh, Mayor Carpenter said, I'll put you on the Zoning Board. He said, but we need, 
we need a couple of open spots on the planning board. And he said, I'll put you on the zoning, but I got to have you on planning. And I said, well, I just want you to know, I want to go on the zoning board. So the best they had was an alternate on the zoning board, which I just resigned from. And I went on the planning. And then at that time, Dave Wheeler was the chairman. I said, well, Dave's the chairman, so I'll be the vice chair and this and that. And then, as you know, the rest of the story, he abruptly left and that's how life is. I mean, you, it ends up that I was the chair, which no regrets, don't get me wrong, right? But it's just how, it's how life works, I guess. But anyway, I, I've enjoyed it and uh, I wish all of you the best and um, I appreciate everybody's contribution. We have to keep in mind that we're, you know, unpaid, uncompensated public servants and uh, it does take time out of your day, if, especially if you've got young families and especially if you're working full time. So the city appreciates it. I know the you know, the, the, the mayor's office appreciates it as well. So thank you for your um, cooperation in your, in your um, attendance. Yes, Mr. Bob, Mack. as soon as we are all vaccinated, uh, we will have cake. Oh, I love that idea. I like cake. cake. <laughs> I'm, I'm half vaccinated. I'm fully vaccinated. And, and Bob, I just, Bob, I just wanted to say too that I really, really appreciate what you've done over the short time I've been here on the board and, and, and I, uh, what Tony was saying too, based on your knowledge and experience of being able to how to read plans and have the discussions with the applicants and other members of the city, um, goes without saying it's a, it's a, it was a huge benefit for me to follow along with that because I, you know, there are some things I can understand and read, but nowhere near or close the, the you know, what you brought to the table. So we're going to miss that. But um, I appreciate the new chair, the new member, James Sweeney, and the new chair, Tony, and a lot of the work, obviously, that Riser and Rob and Pam, and obviously what Chief Williams has done, too, with his board. Without this group, um, we wouldn't get half of the stuff done. So I mean, um, that's that goes without saying. You've got a great... Yeah. Well, first of all, let me say thank you for the comments. Give yourself some credit, because I've watched you, all of you, and you've, you've, you're getting a little bit more confident, and you're making your comments, and you're reading the plans better. And yes, uh, you've got a great support staff there. So it's it's gonna help that support staff is gonna see things that you may not see. Uh, it's just the nature of the process. So consider yourselves fortunate that you've got them. So with that, uh, I guess we'll see you around the block as they say. I sure hope so. so yes. have, have a great I'll miss night. you. And good night. I'll miss you guys too. It's uh, become, you know, it becomes a part of your life. Um, you know. Oh, you we'll talk. Yeah. yeah, we'll talk. I know where you we'll live too. Talk. Yeah, I, I know where talk. you are. <laughs> you've got some. The good news. You, the, going forward, you've got some interesting projects ahead of you. That certainly is one of them. I, I like what we did on Thatcher Street. I think Thatcher Street resolved itself well. There's certainly some other ones that I think that we, because of the contribution that we made as a board. I think we made uh, we had a, we had a good end result. So that's what you want. That's what the that's what the function of the board is. And as I say, you've got a great support staff there to get you through it. So with that, have a great evening. Um, I'm sure we'll we'll be talking to all of you. Thank, Thank you, Bob. You. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good night. Good night. Have a great oh, night. Thank you, Chief. Somebody needs to move to adjourn. We yes. I'll make a motion to adjourn this meeting. I second. <laughs> motion has been made and and second to adjourn. The meeting is adjourned. Good night, all. Good, Good night. night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.